Welcome to this live stream of Street Epistemology in the Park. Today we are at Rose Bowl Park. Uh, I, uh, will, I will be looking for interlocutors in the local traffic. We have a neat new setup right now with three cameras, three, count them, three cameras. This is very exciting. Uh, and uh, I am currently sitting here with uh, a, a fellow epistemologist, Quinn, from Quinn Questions. Oh, and really? also my dear lovely wife, Kimberly, is uh, is helping us out. She has moved herself just slightly outside of the wide shot. Wave your hand on the edge of the wide shot. Uh, yeah, you can just barely see her. She's, trust me, she's right there. <laughs> anyway. Uh, so on this stream, uh, we, we tried to move it to later in the day in, because we found that uh, uh, the walking traffic increased over time. Uh, in, the, in this moment, I'm going to switch us to a wide only view. Maybe. Yes, a wide only view. Uh, and I will change the claim from the live stream is ready to uh, uh, waiting for an interlocutor. Oh, that was weird. I'm going to do that again. Very good. All right, so we are awaiting an interlocutor in the moment. Um, Ivy Elf asked Juggling Lessons, if you could have anyone from the SE server sitting in front of you, besides those present, who would you want? And of course, I don't mean in place of Quinn, I mean like right along the side. And my simple answer would be um, any of the experienced epistemologists, uh, of which I know a couple of dozen. I could mention uh the obvious ones like Anthony and Reed and from not the discord I would mention um uh, I would I would mention Ty uh, from let's chat uh he's not I, on the discord he's not on the discord he's kind of not on discord I think he might be hooked Against into it. the to the thing and I look at how much output he does that he does he's got the podcast he has a day job yeah he he's runs a, a lab yeah. I mean gosh so I'm not at all surprised that he's not there on Discord for me to harass him on a daily basis. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and then I'm, I would certainly include people that uh, uh, have done any of this sort of SE in public. I'm looking at you, uh, IPL. Oh, I thought you were looking at me. No, I'm look. <laughs> well, you're already here. Yeah, you're physically looking at me. Yeah, I'm physically looking Figuratively, at you. Figuratively, you're looking at Ivy. Yeah, I'm okay. figuratively looking at Ivy. Yeah. Ivy uh uh, it, because uh, uh, I've seen her work in Violet Epistemology, her channel. And that's she has a, a channel? She has a channel. She hasn't put up much recently, but she has a good channel, and it's 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 very self-aware in that she has a series, she has some that are specifically, these aren't very good. <laughs> that's good. SEs. Uh, that's a good one. I didn't know she had one. Uh, I would love to have Liberty. He's got deeper discussions. Yeah, I've seen that. The, he looks yeah. like Jesus. He does. Yeah. Liberty looks a lot like Jesus. Yeah. And I really liked his essays out in public. He's that would be a good one. Uh, and uh, Flash. Flash. Flash comes to mind. Of, of the people who can do yeah. epistemology on the on the spot and just, oh, he rocks. He's good. He rocks. That is far from a complete list. Those are just the initial ones that I thought of might be able Real Redding would be very good. Yes. He's so Ooh. in Canada. You know who's really good? Yeah. Tell Roaring me. Monkey. Roaring Monkey is yeah. awesome. He's really good. I've, I've had him in the practice, and, and he consistently does an excellent job yeah. interrogating. Yeah. Love that yeah. Aussie accent. Yeah. Rom, of course. Mm -hmm. Rom. Uh, like that. 
Yeah, so YouTube is apparently not working today. That's inconvenient. That's okay. We're going to ask strangers in the park. Strangers in the park awaiting interviews. Maybe. Strangers in the park. Should I start harassing people? Sure. Or? Okay. Yeah. Sure, sure. You harass people, and, and I will sit here and talk to the people in Discord. Okay. Uh, in general, I'm going to unmute the room. If anybody ah! has... He's tied. <laughs> ah, he's tied up. <laughs> yes. Totally. Oh, Do you have time for a quick five-minute interview? Sorry? Do you have uh, five minutes for an interview? Oh, my God. I don't want to... Oh, you're not on... Sorry. I will. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Will. Thank you. Set, even with the low cut filter on it. Yep, most of you should be unmuted. Reset my. I'm going to reset Discord. This might take a, just a moment. Good. Ah, oh, yes, thank you for adding the speaking source so that if somebody in Discord is speaking with us, their name will show up. Sure, sure, sure. Or, of course, I can make a claim if somebody would like to interrogate. Uh, and, of course, I can also do um, steel manning, something I... Really enjoy some. Oh, somebody's got a. Somebody has a kite sail. I, I often, well, I, I'm I'm expecting you probably can barely see it in the long shot. 
Uh, well, it's probably within range. Uh, let me see if I can see that. But it's really a long ways away. It almost looks like somebody who's going to do parasailing. Uh, and they're far enough away that I can't tell whether they have a motor on their back or not. Or if they're just playing with their uh, kite or parasail. The kind of kite that you would go surfing off, uh, uh, off into the ocean with. It's a significant size. The kind you can fly in. So we have four scenes in this park setup. I'll cycle through them just for anybody who wants to see it while we're waiting. Apparently, Quinn is waiting for passersby who answer yes to if you have a few minutes to burn it through. So we call this one wide plus face to face. So I've got this camera and then let's see, I'm reaching around this camera. Yeah, this is the one. Maybe we do better without me harassing people. I don't know. <laughs> Who knows? That's how we got everyone last time, but so far people have been coming in for water. Well, so, I I want them to come in for water and yeah. and if we get one out of every few that come in for water, that we'll we'll get a few. Yeah. It'll be fine. Yeah, I hope you didn't mind me bringing that uh, that board in last time. I don't mind that at all. It okay. was it was good. It, it, the the claim that he made was uh, kind of boring, really obvious, yeah. and and uh, uh, and the kind of thing where he's simply observing something happening with somebody else, right? And you know, I, this is interesting. Like um, uh, Nathan from Abstract Activist. Yes, you know he spends oh, a lot yeah, of yeah. That's another one that I would love to have here, Ivy. We're he just going to keep time, coming up like, with the answers uh, to that question, like rephrasing the words in the in the Ben Diesel survey, mm -hmm. and trying to get them as you know simple and pr provocative, maybe, or like uh, as thought inducing or as clear as possible, mm -hmm. refining them. And I think the the words that you start the the SE off with, mm -hmm. I think, are often very important in how what kind of claim they make. You know, like. Uh -huh. I think you, I think I heard you say like uh, a, a typical one, I think, which is like, uh, I'm looking for a belief that influences like how you, influences how you go about your day or influences mm -hmm. like something, something along those lines. You said it could be mundane or grand or profound or whatever, just as long as it sort of like plays a role in your life. Mm -hmm. So I think that's to me can sort of trigger off something like that which what did he say again um, he said people go through mood swings yeah yeah and oh and he instead of getting mad at people's mood swings he just smiles and laughs it off or something was was i think yes. his claim yeah. yeah and go out on the bicycle and give him room give him yeah. space to get back to normal so that's the kind of thing that does affect your life other yep. people's mood swings but it's not like a claim you know hmm. it's like uh it's just a, a thing that happens in his life it's not like a contentious belief, you know. Hmm. So I'm, I'm always, one of the things I'm always thinking about when I'm out here is just how do I start this? You know, like what's the best? I'm starting to say like, um, what's the most contentious belief you have? Mm -hmm. What do other people often like disagree with you about? That usually gets interesting responses. Mm -hmm. So Joshua says the previous claim was a super safe claim which might mean he was unsure of what was going on with the interview and didn't feel safe revealing anything more juicy. Yeah. Given that we had a very limited rapport before we started. Yeah, he had not a lot of time. Yeah, this was one that uh, uh, happened when we attempted to start this stream and it didn't actually start. But we we finished out the interview and then went into troubleshooting. Mm-hmm. 
Mm-hmm. Yes. So daily. Mm. I think that was what that was close to what you asked. It is very close. You added the word daily. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, that's my that's my favorite one. Mm-hmm. No bites. No bites. They did nod and wave. <laughs> that was good. <laughs> that's free water. You know, it, it's free cool. candy is kind of pedophile vibe too. Yeah, that's that's weird. <laughs> free candy. Uh -huh. Yes. Yeah, Flash says daily is fine, but something juicy is better. Yeah, something that others might not believe. That's good. What's something you believe that puzzles you why few others believe? Ooh. Do you have any beliefs that you might find uncommon? Or, or people are disagreeing with you? Yeah, those, those are the best ones. Mm-hmm. In my experience. Oh, Halloween themed SE. Sure. Sure, okay. sure. Is it is it true that the veil between this world and the next uh varies in uh, permeability uh due to the time of year? <laughs> wow. <laughs> it's such a loaded question. Isn't 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 that the Halloween, the Al Hallows Eve, the whole idea of Halloween yeah. was spirits? spirits and that there was a permeability of the separation between the world <laughs> hard to say I'm going to rotate through some of these fancy things if I'm in the wide with the F2F yeah, yeah go for it So, uh... <laughs> yes, yeah, so we're very careful about that. So we have this wide and two up, where I uh, we could see one or the other. Uh, then we have this face to face, focusing more in on the two. If this is more commonly what we have for uh, uh, one on one SE, and a lot of online SE looks like this. Of course, not with such pretty external backgrounds. We might have a guest. We have a guest with a dog. Uh, Excellent. Thank you, Joshua. That's working. Uh, Joshua? I don't know why I call you. Well, I guess just the way it's spelled. What? Masks? Yes. Uh, do you want to do this one? or? I, would you like to? I, I did the last one, so I'm going to say host Quinn and guest and I typed guest, and you can type his name when you get that phone. <laughs> you almost thought of everything. My mic is hot. Oh, okay. Oh, 
Okay. I'll keep that in mind. Hey there. Thanks for stopping, man. What's your name? Darren. Darren, I'm Quinn. Good to meet you. Right. Are you cool being filmed? We're, yeah, we're live streaming. Okay, cool. What's What's the dog's name? Her name's Millie. Millie. Yeah. Millie Rock. She's Sweet. super chill, but she's like <laughs> suspicious. Okay. Hey there, Millie. Yeah. What's up, bro? <laughs> oh. I see your food. That's. <laughs> Uh okay, guest. And what was the name again? Darren. Darren. Yeah. D A R R E N. D A R I N. I N. Never seen it spelled that way. Cool. Post. Okay, so what we're doing here is pretty much uh, it's called street epistemology, and um, we pretty much ask you for any anything Come. that you believe. Sit. I usually find that the more uh, contentious the belief is, Sit. the the more interesting it is. Right. So, um, you know, stuff that people a lot of people might disagree with you about is a good good one. Yeah. If you can't think of one, there's a whole board of like possible topics here, but it could it could be anything. So, are you going to ask me questions? Yeah, I'm just asking questions. It's not a debate. It's more just like trying to unpack the 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 method mostly on how you got right. to a certain belief. Okay. Anything anything pop into mind? Um. Also, is that a Sense 8 shirt? No, I made it. It's, it's uh, a brand I was going to start a while back, but got derailed. Damn. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah. It's an 8, for, and on the back it says 8 days a week, but it's actually 100 if you turn it sideways. Oh, shit. Yeah. That's that's cool. Come here, man. It's motivational type. Yeah. That beats. All right. Which side's which? Um, I think the one with the Sit. cable is the, the left ear. Sit. 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 Millie. Millie. Sit. Looks like the dog's just trying to find shade. Oh, yeah, he's just trying to get shade. Got it. There's going to be people on the internet talking. They might ask a question or two, but it's mostly just, just you and I. Um, Got it. And we can, we can go past five minutes, but it's just to respect your time, the five-minute limit. Yeah, for uh, sure. So did any belief come into mind off the bat? Uh, no. Okay. Yeah, you can just hit me with whatever. If I'm not comfortable talking about it, I won't talk about it. And any of these work for you? Do you have a position on any of them? Sure, yeah. There's also just like the God claim. Mm -hmm. people, some people believe in karma. Some people believe two genders exist or mm -hmm. more. There's a whole bunch. Right, yeah. right. Okay. Yeah, any of those. Whatever. You want me to pick? Yeah, sure. Okay. Um, how do you feel about uh, aliens? Are they real? Are they here with us? Oh man, that's such a good one. Um, I don't know. It's been it's been uh, a a long debate, of course. Uh -huh. But uh, my thoughts on that is, I don't see how there how there couldn't be. Okay. What uh, can you elaborate on that a little bit? Given, I mean, if you think about oh, the well, sorry, on what question, uh -huh. like. Are they real? There's two questions on that one. There, there's are they real and are they here? Oh, are they real? Yeah. Okay, that's the one you're saying. So I guess if they're here. real, maybe maybe they'll. If I believed in like entirely that they were real, I guess it goes to say that they'd probably be here. Okay, on I, Earth is what I mean. Yeah. Okay. I don't know. <laughs> uh, but are they real? I don't know. Okay. I'd like to think so but not in the sense of oh, fuck dude like can i cuss on here oh yeah totally okay, um okay. what were you gonna say when you said how couldn't they be i, I interrupted you there my bad you well given all the all the evidence of multiple multiple universe um or multiple galaxies mm -hmm. right that are just light years away and we we haven't even made it out of our own galaxy right yeah so it's a good what, yeah you're saying like there's so much space unexplored right and it's it's uh probable that there's other life out there right it's improbable that there's not um mm -hmm. okay and just on the on the second part of the question you said if they are real you're assuming that they're here as well yeah why is that um if i believed 100 percent matter of fact that they're real mm. i think i would base 
that off of like I've experienced them. Right? Oh, okay. So, so you have or personal they have experience been, with with an alien? No, but if if I did like I, like I said, I don't fully know if they're real, uh-huh. but if I did, no. Okay. So people who've been like abducted right, right, right. Um, or whatnot, or claim they've been abducted, you would ask them, do you believe in aliens? They would say yes. Uh-huh. And then you'd be like, are they here with us? And they'd probably be like, yes. Right. You know, or I don't know. They came from somewhere else. And what, what I know you can't know because you haven't had an experience with them, mm-hmm. but what do you what is your opinion like man my opinion is there's got to be something here yeah well so my god this is such a i don't even know where to start um i don't know yeah i i have all the time in the world but you know uh it's it's we just end it whenever you want to yeah so what do you mean like um when you when you when you say that you think that they're here, why do you think so? Like, um, is is it just like is it the same? Uh, is it the same as the reason that you use to understand why you think they're real? Like, it's just more probable to you that they're here on Earth with us, or they're like evidence. If they exist, yeah. So you think that if they exist, they're probably here on Earth, right? With us. How come? Oh, yeah. okay. So, but you're saying you're pretty sure they exist. Yeah. No, I'm, I'm not sh- pretty sure. I don't, okay. I don't know. On a scale from zero to a hundred, how sure are you? Zero. Zero percent. Zero. Okay. It's complete theory. It's complete. Like there's a fuck ton of space out there. Uh-huh. Maybe each galaxy is a completely different universe and okay. maybe they're just other human beings over there. Right. Not some kind of alien life form. So then it goes to say like, well, what do you mean by alien? Like, what does that mean? Yeah. You know, what if they're just other human existence in a different dimension? And what we call what we see as like black holes. This is total theory. Just came whatever. This is not fact. But what if black holes were like the transitional period or transitional space to an, an alternate dimension? Right. Which is like you watch Rick and Morty. Yeah. So it's like it's like that kind of like that almost you know or have you seen um uh what's that with abed the character abed oh, um, uh come on it's right uh, there community community yeah. when they roll the dice in in that one episode and he's like he oh, catches yeah. a dice and he's like it, there could have been multiple uh realities happening and then it plays out all like each different reality jeff's reality um and, uh, and all the other it's characters' weird realities. Those later seasons, they just got like they started doing all these kind of trippy episodes. Well, the writers are one of the guys from Rick and Morty, I believe. Oh yeah, I think the the main writer, the main yeah. Writer, yeah, they did that. So it just made sense. Yeah, you know. But okay, so you're saying, and don't let me put words in your mouth. But you're mm-hmm. saying just like um, you, you're, you're not sure if aliens exist or not. To you, it's just a theory, right? Do you think that the theory is true? I guess, like, not to say like that you know that it's true. I'm not asking if you know that it's true. I'm yeah, asking... I think the theory is just a theory. Okay. Like, that's why it's a theory because I don't know if it's true or not. Right. You know what I mean? Okay. Um, I would like to believe uh-huh. there's something else. Like, there was another intelligence. Yeah. And after watching, um, after watching, uh what's his name uh what's that got that documentary from the dude that worked at area 51 lazar uh did, have you seen it i haven't seen it oh my gosh anyway um i think i'm a pretty good judge of character for the most part okay. uh and watching him tell his story <clears throat> you just usually you know when somebody's just like bullshitting mm-hmm. But this guy's story is crazy. Like talking about working at Area 51 yeah. and the things that he experienced and like uh, technology that we have that isn't from Earth. Yeah, right. Like what? So there's like a anti I think it's like anti-gravity device. Uh-huh. And he talks about <clears throat> when he was giving, they were giving him his tour when he was working there. He started working there. He said, touch this 
like orb type thing mm -hmm. uh it was metallic or it looked metallic whatever I'm like yeah go ahead and touch it <clears throat> and he reached out to like touch it and couldn't it was almost like how you putting two magnets, magnets together okay. yeah. and he couldn't do it uh -huh. and he had never experienced technology like that before interesting he's like this is not technology that we have on earth right so for this guy to come out he has nothing to win from coming out right and uh -huh. telling us they erased all his history they erased all his his school credentials you know the government wanted to get rid of him but he came to public uh so they couldn't kill him he's still alive he's still alive okay uh but they make his life a living hell the doc yeah. documentary came out I highly suggest watching it. It's on Netflix? Yeah. And I'm not a conspiracy theorist at all. You don't you know? strike me as one. But yeah. um, someone in the chat was ask actually asking, uh, could you clarify your definition of the word theory? Mm. My definition of that word is, is an opinion uh, gathered on, on just experiences mm -hmm. and that that have led me to believe a particular idea, right? Okay. So I have 34 years <clears throat> of experience, um, personal and like interrelational and whatever. Mm -hmm. And uh, that had, that leads me to have my own personal theories about subjects, right? So it's not based off of like necessarily like a plethora of, of, uh, uh, scientific studies that I've done. Okay. It's literally just. What is it based off of? It's based off of, like I said, ba basically an opinion. So when I say theory for me, it's opinion. It's opinion. Okay. Yeah. So theory and opinion for you are, are like interchangeable in the way that you're using it. Right. Okay. Right. Um, Which that makes me curious to know what the actual definition of theory is now. Yeah. I mean, I, it's kind of used in a lot of different ways. I think. I think a lot of people, I think people distinguish between a scientific theory and like a, like just a regular theory, like yeah. layman theory. Um, yeah. Like maybe one has more evidence to support it. Um, right. Or more like a, of a peer review process or something. I don't know. Yeah. But, yeah. Okay. So just, I'll have a couple more questions yeah. about the, uh, the alien claim. Thanks for sitting, sitting down with me. Yeah. Um, I got some time. Okay. Sweet. Uh, so it's, it's, just your opinion that there could be more um that there could be more life out in the universe right that's a theory it's also <clears throat> if that theory is true you're saying definitely there would be alien life on earth and i'm what i guess what I'm not definitely is, okay maybe it maybe that is what i said but that's not what i mean so to clarify on back on that is I would, I wouldn't be surprised if there was. Okay. You wouldn't be surprised. Yeah. And is stuff like, um, I'm wondering what, what would, uh, build that confidence or I guess a better way to say is like, what, why wouldn't, why won't you be surprised? Is it because of stuff like, uh, that documentary? Like, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So maybe something like that documentary or. Um, have you ever just met like a really weird person? Yeah. <laughs> you know, uh -huh. where it's just like, uh, what was that? You know, could be an alien. Could be. Okay. Uh, I don't know. Highly doubt it, but, um, anything's possible, anything's possible yeah. kind of thing. Um, but yeah, I think, I think it would be cool if is that it... were the case. Okay. It would be cool if that were the case. Are you kind of hoping it is? Kind of. Okay. Yeah. So there's there's three things that I'm hearing. It's like uh, there's there's some I guess you could call it evidence like the documentary, maybe something you've read. Yeah. And then there's like just your personal experience with you. You might think you wouldn't be surprised if some of the people you met were aliens. Mm -hmm. And then there's also just the fact that you want it to be true. Right. Um, some people true. identify as that. Oh, that's true. <laughs> yeah. They identify as alien. Yeah. That's kind of creepy. Yeah, um, some people would say that they're actually from Mars or they're actually from another planet. Yeah, it's, it, it's often the people who really look like weird. Yeah, <laughs> or at least talk really weird. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I'm wondering uh, how confident, and I'll I'll explain the confidence scale. Zero. Yeah. If you're zero percent confident that aliens are here, that means that your 
you're not confident at all. You have all doubts about the situation. Mm-hmm. So that's more like being on one side of the debate. I think 50 is the neutral, yeah. and then 100 is like you're completely sure that they're that they're here. Where would you be on that scale? Zero. So you completely doubt that aliens are here. Yeah. Really? Okay, because mm-hmm. you just you were saying that you think that um some people they, that you I met feel like might... they could be. Okay. But I doubt it. It's like okay. I could go play the lottery. Yeah. But I doubt that I'm gonna win. There's a chance I could win. Uh uh-huh. There is a chance, but I doubt that I'm gonna win. You understand what I'm saying? Completely. Mm-hmm. That's kind of what I mean about that. Okay. Yeah. So, so it's not necessarily black or white. That's it's... about how confident you are that aliens are exist. One thousand percent. Yeah. You think like uh, it could be real. It would be cool if, if they were real. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But you highly doubt it. Yeah. That they're here. I mean. Yeah. Um, well said. Yeah. Okay. Exactly. Uh. All right. Is there anything that could increase your confidence that they're here? I mean, unless you reveal something to me right now that I've never seen. What What would I have to reveal? <laughs> That's a good question. Um, I, I don't know. Like, what would take you from zero to, like, like 30%? Damn, that is a good question. I heard that the Pentagon released some sort of, like, uh, UFO sightings. Did you hear about that? Briefly, what I did hear was that they, um, what was spotted by the fighter pilots, they confirmed that sighting. Okay. as a ufo right um and i briefly just heard about that i didn't uh i didn't look too much into it but all i heard was that the pentagon confirmed that yeah 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 does that did that make you feel any type of way or? no um and i'm not educated enough on the subject to to speak to speak very matter of fact i mean i can give my opinion on my my vague uh understanding of tidbits that i've heard throughout you know the past few years okay uh but apparently they've done like um flight tests with these discs which yeah. bob lazar is his name yeah the the documentary guy yeah yeah okay so the people who did the documentary did it on him so bob talks about these things he said he's been inside one it uh he talks about I don't know what the hell they call it, whatever the anti-gravity, it was like an anti-gravity machine that they have in the middle of that, per, that uses gravity instead of like how we use jet propulsion and like uh, combustion engines, they use gravity to propel their vehicles. I don't even understand. Yeah, how exactly. Works, right? Is it just like momentum or like, right. like how do you bend time and space? <laughs> Yet we look at a black hole and we see time and space bent, uh-huh. right? So it's like, what the living fuck is, does that even mean? One more question for you. Yeah. Do you do you believe, uh, what's his name, Bob Lazar? Bob Lazar, yeah. Do you believe him? I do. Okay. And but you're still at a zero as to whether or not aliens are here? Here on Earth, yes. Maybe their technology. They're, now. How Okay, that's another good one. How confident are you that their technology is here? Man, I would have to say it's 50-50. 50 because okay. there's i don't know the man personally to make a you know 100 percent guess yeah but based off of my experience with people in life uh-huh. and hearing his story i don't he doesn't come off as somebody who's just like would be a liar yeah because i've i've watched those conspiracy theories on youtube and all that kind of shit and you you get the cuckoos and you're like dude this guy's like way yeah okay aliens yeah or he has some kind of motive or like maybe he has some childhood trauma and he's living in this delusional state right. which i've encountered a lot of those types of people in my life i encounter a lot of people like that doing this oh i can particular. imagine <laughs> yeah yeah um so when he gets on camera i mean there's not there's you don't see any motive mm-hmm. the only the only motive that you might see is that he wants the truth to get out because this is revolutionary technology right. that's being hoarded for whatever reason. Um, and I, I probably saw this maybe a, like a year ago. So my memory on it's a little vague but or rough, but it's incredible. Mm-hmm. So as far as technology being here, uh, I'm like 50-50. Um, and then as far as aliens being here, my question is, well, 
being here as in like we have an alien or walking amongst us either or oh man i've also heard i don't know how this actually got debunked i'm not even gonna say it okay <laughs> um <laughs> but uh that's fair yeah yes yeah, so like somebody came out and said that they have some extraterrestrial being in area 51 yeah, yeah. and then some like some shit happened then i did a little more research and then turns out like this guy was it was all like a ploy Damn. um okay. but i was actually stoked i was like oh shit maybe they caught like an angel or like uh some kind of spirit being you know what i mean right yeah that i agree that would shake things up in a cool way like it, yeah. it would be cool if it if it was real um i think it would be terrifying for a lot of people who don't who don't have some kind of grounding um, belief or, or stake in reality uh -huh. or in this reality, I guess you can say. Yeah. Um, I've experienced things that threw me through a loop. Everything that I thought I believed uh -huh. uh, was not true. Uh, <laughs> oh shit. Like what? Um, just my faith in God, mm -hmm. what I thought I believed about Jesus, what I thought I believed about church and all that kind of stuff. And as you know, doing these types of interviews, that is a whole topic of discussion. Yeah, definitely. Um, which, you know, I don't mind talking about. But um, for people who don't have some kind of like maybe faith or some kind of maybe like grounding in whatever uh -huh. this is here and yeah. now to get an earth shattering like, hey, like wake up call. Yeah. Like there's fucking aliens, bro. Right. And they look like you know some mib shit you know what does that say to your reality right 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 you know yeah no i think it would certainly uh it would like unnerve me you know it would make me a bit uncomfortable right but i'm saying i think it would also be cool to shake things up in that way um oh for sure uh and i think that's why if they do have technology sorry to cut you off no, no. they don't release it so rapidly because who like the world might fucking we got a virus and look what they did to the fucking grocery stores. You know what I mean? Right. Imagine we come out with like a fucking alien. Right. What do you, <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. So yeah, people we just jump to the iPhone 20 where we're like fucking <laughs> doing alien shit. Right. Yeah. Um, so people in general, I think are, it's unfortunate, but like irrational in the hordes. You know what I mean? The I know I said people. last question before, but this is the real last one. Yeah, you no, said ask me for what? people who don't have ground, ground, grounded beliefs in our reality, um, some kind of grounded belief that would really make them panic. Do you have such a belief? Yeah. What What is that? It's a, That's a really good question. Long story short, because I know as soon as I say what I'm going to say, uh, there's so much uh, to unpack from that to unpack, but there's so much, uh, I guess, stigma is the word okay. when, when you attach like a negative. Yeah. It's uh, like dogma, dogma, or whatever. Um, but the historical evidence of Christ, that's, that's what I find in his resurrection. Mm -hmm. That's what grounds me uh, in this reality. And, okay. and I've been to, uh, the edge of reality to the point where that that for me a little bit of a backstory when i was six i was like a hood rat kid gangs violence drugs jail all kinds of crazy shit growing up probably stealing i was just a really bad kid involved in a lot of bad shit and uh at 16 i kind of had a wake-up call people wanted like 16 years old people have tried to kill me um on at on the spot but never did i experience somebody like actively trying to murder me until i was about 16 almost 17 and uh kind of had a wake-up call shook my that kind of shook my reality i was like fuck i'm gonna die uh -huh. eventually yeah. whether by the sword or by the sickness right so mm. or whatever or that an accident that reality had never set in to you before before someone was trying to kill you yeah because you that's a hard reality to, to, to think about. Yeah. Death. Yeah. You know? Uh, so we just kind of live our lives as if it's not going to happen until it happens. And then we deal with it then. Right. Right. So like for me, it, it was just kind of like, well, why do I have to deal with it then? Mm -hmm. Why can't I live my life in a state of truth where I'm, 
I'm not running from the truth. You know what I'm saying? It's like you deny the truth of death. Yeah. But you wanna you wanna live this life You're of talking about facing it. Right. Okay. Right. Like just accepting that it's gonna happen and living living with that rather than trying to distract yourself from it. I'm wondering, Far easier said than done. I'm wondering where Jesus' resurrection comes into that that equation. Like Um so did that does that have to do with your accepting death and all that? Yeah, so accepting death. I got introduced to, you know, the traditional Christian church. For me, I was in Orlando, Florida. So over there is Pentecostal, very, uh, very conservative, very like, don't say fuck shit or damn. Yeah. Uh, and God forbid you have sex because. Was this before 16? This was at 16. At so 16. so uh, when I came to the knowledge of, I guess I would say my encounter with God, uh-huh. right? um at 16 which was just it it was a bunch of experiences that led up to a god if you're real if if whatever the fuck your name is if you're real if all this stuff is real you come get me because i can't run away from this lifestyle okay and because if i do that i'm sure i'm gonna die like period yeah. so i need some kind of intervention and i remember just crying in my bed one night like 16 years old just like I'm going to fucking die in these streets. Yeah. And what's that going to do to my dad and my brother and, you know, all this stuff. So I kind of had this moment of like, I need to get my shit together, but I, I'm kind of stuck. Right. So. Okay. Um, right. Interrupt me if I get any, if I, if no, I'm no, like, I just have one question about that. Like, so you asked basically for an intervention, right? Did you get one? Yes. Okay. And it, and it was a little, <laughs> it was a little, uh, wasn't like some alien or angel came knocking on my door like hey darren i heard you were talking to the man upstairs uh if only that right yeah. if it was that easy i ended up uh going to this club i was a break dancer for a long time oh, cool. so I, I had i was able to go to these clubs with my friends and they're like teen nights but we always got kind of like you know vip because we were like the b-boy crew and we oh. brought audiences and stuff like that did like, you ever have a uh like a um crap i can't think of the movie the dance off movie mm. yeah yeah i have a, a good friend of mine was in there which do you know what it is um it's yes the most popular one yes uh why can't i think of it i can think of her name Catherine mccormick i was basically just trying to ask if you've had dance offs like crew dance offs yeah, okay. very similar but this is where you're spinning on your back and your head and your hands and Dude. doing all kinds of crazy footwork oh, yeah i used to watch those on youtube they're really cool stuff yeah um, yeah so I was pretty obsessed with that growing up and I, I was in a couple crews. Anyway, my waking point was went to this club. Um, like I said, I was kind of just like a little hoodlum, always getting into fights because I had something to prove and uh, got into a fight in the club. And I didn't pick it. Friends picked it, but I ended up getting kicked out. But I told my friend, let me sit in your car. You know, I was, I was 15 going on 16 at this time. Okay. This is before my cry out to like, yo, like, whoever's out there like this jesus shit is real i need you to come get me yeah. took my friend's car without his permission ran a red light i i swear to you i mean everybody says this when they get into an accident i swear it was green uh -huh. there was no car it was two o'clock in the morning the club was about to get out at three in uh -huh. florida it gets out like three or four i go and there's no traffic but this vw out of nowhere like t-bones me throws me into oncoming track like this Oh. whatever i nipped this other car i'm like holy shit i flew into the passenger seat i didn't have my 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 uh seatbelt on glass hit me all in the face was in my mouth all kinds of shit the guy gets out of his car comes he's like what the fuck are you doing kid nothing happened to his car my car was like total total it was like a c-shape although it still rolled his car the, the front bumper strip there's like this black strip on it popped off wow. that was it his bumper didn't or his hood didn't bend nothing. He was fine. His car was fine. Your car, your friend's car, which you kind of, which you stole, basically. Okay, it was yeah. totaled. How were you? I was fine. I had a okay. couple of cuts and stuff from the glass. All right. But uh, so I get out. I was like, oh shit! Like, what am I gonna do? I'm 15, going on 16 at this time. My friend who let me use his car was 18. Come here, mama. You're gonna fuck everything up. You don't have like a license or mm -hmm. shit like that. No license. Uh, I had I had long hair at the time. 
Uh, so anyway, all that happened. I tell my sit. I tell my buddy, he, they get out of the club. I'm like, yo, I'm so sorry. Like, <laughs> what are you going to say? I fucked your car, bro. He's like, what the fuck? I was like, I'm uh... so sorry, dude. I thought I was, I was just going to go. I explained to him. He's like, it's, it's all good. It's all good. Long story short, fast forward. I thought I was going to go to jail, but I didn't. I just got the ticket. I tell him, I'm going to shave my head. I'm going to get a job. I'm going to, I'm going to pay you back. Right. Uh-huh. Uh, so anyways, we drive home. Oh, let me not <laughs> skip this story. Uh, fuck dude okay guy comes who hit me comes takes the keys out of my car i'm freaking out i'm trying to like go yeah my brother he lived down the street my older brother uh he's fighter like he wasn't a gangbanger but he was like he's a big dude just covered in tats okay he was just a great guy but he was my influence i said yo i need to get out of here what should i do he's like don't run guy came who hit me takes the keys out of my car uh and then he uh he's like kid get out of the car i get out of the car i'm in kind of a daze a dude walks up this is right after the accident sit oh shit (laughs) she just wants to play yeah hey come here mom come here hold on hold on guys nelly's going crazy girl good girl sit 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 good girl my mom the movie we were trying to think of was or i was was you got served girl sit you got served, yeah. That's what I was trying to think of. Okay, that's not at all what I was thinking of. <laughs> was it step up? Step up. Step up, okay. <laughs> now it comes. So, um, long story short, random dude comes out of nowhere, hands me a knife, mm-hmm. grabs my arm, puts a knife in my hand in the middle of the street. This is right after the accident? Right after the accident. Okay. Guy came, took the keys out of the car. I'm like, I get out of the car like, well, fuck, what am I going to do? Dude comes up out of nowhere just before they let out the, uh, the club. And now, come here. Sit. Good girl. Sit. Good girl. Stay. Stay. Good girl, mama. Good girl. <laughs> so, uh, I was like, I didn't know. I, I'm just like autopilot. I yeah. grabbed the knife, right? I'm holding it. He's like, yo, go kill that motherfucker. The one who. Some random dude. Random fucking guy. And I'm like. And I look at it, and I'm like, what the fuck? Can I the dude who hit you? The dude, no, the dude who hit me was on the phone with the cops down, like, from here to the concession stand right there. Uh-huh. I'm in the middle of the street right here, like. Random dude fuck? comes up, hands you a knife, tells you to kill who? The guy who hit me. He said, kill him and take your keys back, get the fuck out of here. I'm like, I had the knife in my hand. I was like, thought about it for a second. I'm like, wait, I'm already going to go to jail uh-huh. for stealing my friend's car. But I didn't. Uh. So I'm like, yo, nah, like, and he's like walking. I was like, yo, 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 no, 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 no. Like, I don't need, I'm not going to jail, bro, for that. I ain't murdered somebody. He's like, you sure? You sure? Damn. Disappeared. And with the knife still in your hand? No, no, I, he took it back. Okay. Disappeared. Um, I didn't even think about that until like the end of the night. We all get back home. We're talking about how crazy the situation was. I was like crying to my homie. I'm like, yo, I'm so sorry, bro. I'm going to fix your car. He's like, who was that guy that you were handing something to it was like he handed me a knife he's like fuck right so anyway two weeks go by i'm like depressed my homies don't talk to me anymore they're talking shit behind my back i go outside one day because he's like hey yo the dude's in the car i wrecked he's like yo come outside real quick i was like yo what's up man long time no see how's everything going he's like yeah yeah can i talk to you i was like yeah so i step out of my apartment close the door i put i used to play lacrosse so i had this big metal pipe I didn't have the head of the stick, but I just had the aluminum pipe. And uh, it was hanging out outside your apartment. It was like right by the door. And I, I closed the door a little bit just in case. But I was like, he ain't going to get right. It's just him and a couple girls downstairs. So I sat down and said, what's up, man? He's like, hey, let me ask you a fucking question. Why'd you lie to the police? I was like, "To the what? Like, you lied to the fucking police. You ain't going to pay for my car. You told them that you didn't wreck my car. I was like, yo, yo, chill, 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 chill. My brother just got out of prison. I was like, if anything goes down, he's going to wreck you. I don't want him going back to prison. So that's what's going through my head. He's like, man, what the fuck you lying? And before I could stand up, he sucker punched me. I got up, threw him against the wall. I was like, yo, you like, I'm in shock. Like my friend just hit me. I said, yo, I can't do this, bro. Like, it sounded like he was cool with you after you crashed his car like that day, though. Right. But everybody then- was getting in his head like, yo, yo, that dude, D, like, you need to fuck him up. Like, 
he's lying to the police. He told the cops this. He told the cops that. I don't know whatever the reason. Like little hood kids just trying to start drama. You uh-huh. know, we're 15, 16. He was 18. Yeah. So long story short, is it cool if I keep my mask like that? Yeah. Uh, I'll clean shit off after about six feet. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so uh, he he ends up going downstairs, leaving. Mm-hmm. He's like, "Don't fucking come outside." So I go outside with my stick. All my homies are right there. Like, what's up, bitch? What's up, pussy? Blah blah. All this stuff. Yeah. I'm like, whoa. These were like the homies. Like, uh-huh. bro, we did some crazy shit together. Now, like, all of a sudden, you want to beat my ass because, like. For what, right? So, fast forward, my brother shows up. He didn't like that. I had this whole fucking swollen. So they jumped you. They ju- he sucker punched me. They uh-huh. never got a hold of me because as soon as my brother came home, like thirty minutes later, he went out there, and like you know, my brother's massive, and he was a bouncer in Florida. So all his friends were bouncers. He had like three of them who lived in the neighborhood. So he grabbed them. They were all sitting at the swimming pool. He surrounded the swimming pool with three of his friends and scared the shit out of them. So he's like, "They'll never fuck with you again." Two weeks later. They start acting cool with me. I was like, what'd you tell him? He's like, don't worry about it. Like, just know that they ain't going to fuck with you anymore. So they're like, all right, cool. But I ain't got friends anymore. <laughs> right. So this was, this was after I kind of had that moment of like, uh, fuck God, like if God or Jesus, whatever, right? Somebody come and get me. Mm-hmm. But what led me to that point, so that was a transition period, right? Yeah. What led me to the point of even praying that prayer was all that was we went, we, we used to buy weed from this guy in Florida. Uh, he lived in a motel, a crazy looking cholo dude. Like tatted, he wasn't Hispanic at all. He was white, uh-huh. tatted head, bald, dickies, like face tats. He had like bullet hole tats all over. Craziest looking motherfucker. you ever. <laughs> But only one person can go in there and buy weed from him. And uh, funny story is Queen Latifah's cousin. Me and him were like best friends growing up. Uh, so he That's was actually my neighbor. <laughs> yeah, it's crazy. Uh, so he was my neighbor growing up for about six years. He was like an older brother to me. He always protected me. And like he would just handle my dirty work. It, I felt bad on some things, but uh, on everything actually. But anyway, he goes to buy weed. We see a hot girl upstairs. Mind you, I'm 15, about 15 at this time. And this is this is a little bit of backstory before they all turned on me. Uh, so like, this is before they jumped you. This is before okay. they jumped. Me. So they go. Uh, I'm like, damn, yo, yo. We saw this girl above our drug dealer. Mm-hmm. Yo, yo, what's up? So we went up there, knocked on her door. Yo, come out. You know, I'm with my friends trying to be all like, that's you know, bold, dog. Super <laughs> bold. So I'm like, yo, like, yo, where's that? A dude opens the door. We don't give a fuck. I, of course, like. I was always a soft kid. I was a fighter, but I was I always had a kind heart. And but my homies, they didn't give a fuck. So I had to I had to be that too. So the girl or the dude opens the door and was like, Yeah, where's the where's that girl that was here? You didn't give a fuck who he was, boyfriend, no. husband, nothing, brother. He's like, Yo, y'all need to leave. I'm like, the fuck? And my friend Adrian, dude from New Jersey, like hot temper, uh Puerto Rican guy, just was like, Yo, what the fuck? What the fuck? And I was like, oh. Here we go. But I had to buck up, too, because I'm with my friend. So he's like, close the door. How many of you? There was about five of us. Oh, okay. Five cool. or six of us. Ty is in downstairs buying weed. So we finally come downstairs. We're like, come down, motherfucker. Come down. Uh, long story short, he's friends with our drug dealer. Calls our drug dealer. Dude comes in and says, yo, what the fuck is going on? Ty comes out, walks downstairs. He's like, yo, we need to get out of here. This dude's pissed. And we're like, fuck you. Dad. Back and forth. The drug dealer pulls a gun, points it at me. He's on the second story. He's like, "You're you're on the ground." I'm on the ground. My homies are in the car, just kind of hanging by the car, like, "Ah, fuck you!" It was me, and my friend Adrian, right here, shouting to the second story, I'm like, "What, bitch? What?" Do-? The drug dealer comes out. What the fuck, bitch? You about to die tonight? I'm looking at the dude upstairs. I thought the the drug dealer was on our side, so I wasn't even paying him attention until I heard the yeah the metal. I was like. Oh, shit. And he pointed at me. I looked to my left. My homie Adrian's gone. Like, Go, get in the car. Get in the car. I was like, oh, shit. He's like, what's up, bitch? You about to die. I'm like, yeah, I think so. <laughs> right? <laughs> he turns to run down the stairs. And as soon as he turned, I was like, go, 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 go. He took the gun off me. I was like, get in the car. I jumped in the car. We're all piled in the back seat. And we took off. <sighs> and uh, 
it was it was kind of in that moment where and that wasn't the first time I, I had a fight in the mall that this dude pulled a knife on me and tried to stab me in the middle of the mall um got jumped all kinds of crazy shit but in that uh i think my older brother found out he's like yo you need to chill you know oh he came in and saw all these stolen radios and car parts in my in my bedroom had a table like this and a blanket over it and had all i just robbed okay. cars at night so my brother found out about that and he saw my my stolen car parts and was like you need to change your life man dad is worried about you he's too scared to say anything so it was like that instance my brother correcting me just i was like yo i'm really gonna die like this uh -huh. so that led me to like that think, think about like i'm gonna fucking die one day like i said either by the sword or by the sickness uh or just old age you know yeah. that's what we hope for right yeah but uh i gotta make a change i can't keep doing this, this is what i want to fucking do and it just kind of dawned on me like, okay cool then what the fuck is after this what is after this and if there is like this heaven or hell or whatever i don't want to be separated from the one who made me if that's even a thing uh -huh. and if it is a thing well i want to know the one who made me who are you and if you're there do something to get my attention mm. Wh whatever you have to do i was like weeping I, I wrote it on a on a on a piece of paper i put it under my bed and then all this crazy chaos started happening i lost all my friends uh and the only friends that i had were these this christian dude who was like he used to be a crazy pothead um which i'm not against smoking weed but he uh he's like i want you to meet somebody come through uh it's like yeah dude i called him because he was the only dude in school he used to be a pothead turned crazy christian like the dude that he'll approach you and, and be like how's your relationship with the lord and like yo don't fucking in talk high to school me. he was in like high that? school that's crazy well he went from like crazy like 12 blunts a day to like preaching jesus yeah you know so uh -huh. you think like what the that's cool, yeah, don't that's drink the kool-aid bro right there. so long story short he was the only friend i had right so i was like yo luke like what does the bible say about this you know he's like well and of course he was he told me he's i want you to meet my friend lewis uh and he's this ex gang member like whatever turned christian uh -huh. yeah cool whatever i met him we went to church it was cool a couple things hit me uh, at the end of it, he just kind of was like, yo, I just want you to know I'm not here to preach anything to you, but God has a plan for your life. And there's something special about you. Uh, just know that. Uh -huh. And I was like, all right. And I just knew. Oh, and he goes, not many people know this, if any, but God watches you as you cry yourself to sleep at night. And when he said that, I mean, I had like a bold face and he was kind of like prophesying over a couple of my friends, like B-boy friends that I brought to church with me yeah, that night yeah, yeah. Uh, from my school. And they were like, well, that was crazy. But when he got to me, I was like, he ain't going to know this. Right. And as soon as he said that, like he paused and was like, God wants you to know that he watches you while you cry yourself to sleep at night and you're not alone. He's been with you since you were born. Mm. And I just was like, ah, you just knowing something it was like, yeah, yeah. You, you can't argue with it. Yeah. That uh, I, I really feel that because that I had a similar experience in my like, and I'm I've kind of gone back and forth between believing and not believing and all right. that stuff. But there was someone who just kind of hit my situation on the head when mm. I was going through a lot, and that was the main thing that sort of made me like, uh, look, just look more into into God and all that kind of stuff. But, right. Yeah. Um, so wow, that's crazy, man. So that that was for me the experience that I had. It was in that moment uh -huh. that he said that all this other shit was leading up to that, yeah. that for him to say that it was like, I'm creating all this. Kit, you know, you see those painters when they splat shit on the paint and then they do like one little thing. And it's like, Oh, now fuck. it makes sense. He tied it all together. Right. It was almost like God was orchestrating. I say God, because we don't really know his name, but for lack of better <laughs> words, words, uh, it was like he was orchestrating the masterpiece. And he set that dude, Lewis, in my life at the perfect time to be like, mm. there. You know, it was like Salt Bay, right? <laughs> <laughs> uh, which led to now it's been about 16 years of, of pursuing a relationship with understanding who is God, who is Christ. So you're like early 30s? 34, yeah. 34, okay. Right. Cool, man. So that that is my, my foundational. Um, that's where I find my foundation. 
uh, which has been shaken multiple times, but has never been um, obliterated. You know, it's it's been like, sh- yeah. You know, and I think it has been shaken by by God Himself. What well, this? Hey, I, I'm really thankful that you sat down with me and told me this story. It's yeah, a really, man. it's a really good one. Um, and I, I think I've taken up a lot of your time. No worries. Um, I really just do have one more question. Yeah. You said it's never been obliterated, but it's been shaken. Is there anything that could obliterate it? Like, is there anything that could, that could like make what you think wrong, or prove you wrong in any sense, like, um, or even just sway you a different way? Evidence and experience. Is there anything? I'm sure if there was another experience that is more true than the experience of the words of Lewis. Lewis. Yeah. Okay. That makes sense. Hey, thanks, man. I would shake Absolutely, your hand, man. but yeah. yeah, no worries. Good dude. talking to you. Yeah, I appreciate it. Where can I uh, find your stuff? Um, so it's gonna go up on this guy's channel. His name's Juggling Lessons on oh, YouTube. Okay. Yeah. Right. Um. So yeah, this is like a four-hour live stream. Um. And yeah, juggling lessons. Juggling lessons. It's it's right here. So you could you could just take a picture of it if you want. Yeah, I will. Awesome, dude. Well, it was nice talking sure. to you. I appreciate yeah, it. Good. Good. So let's go to wide only. Okay. Are you headed out? Or? Yeah, she got her. Actually, right. we might just take a couple laps or something again. But... All right, Millie. Thanks for chilling. <laughs> See ya. See ya, brother. Usually we're live streaming, and today we are actually recording. Because we, we and we have troubleshooting to figure out. We yeah. started live streaming and nope. Uh, okay, so we're just gonna record it. Yeah. yeah. And it's oh, it's yeah. being recorded locally here. Yeah, yeah. Uh, also uh, for audio, and then the whole video feed. If you if you come around here, you can see what we were doing. I'm switching to this one. Oh, yeah. Hold on, it's gonna it's resetting. One, two, three. Okay. So here's a camera on me, right? And there was you, oh, okay. and there was a wide shot. So Doggy got to be in the whole thing, oh, she, and that that's the scene that, that we were, so were recording. Will see how she was losing her shit. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Awesome. Well, and oh yeah, the doggy is uh, yeah. very well. Yeah, awesome. Yeah. Yeah, man, this stuff is great. I uh, if you will literally just melt right on the face. Yep. With all that. <laughs> yep. 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 Uh. There is somebody else is doing something like this recently, and it's really inspiring. I love this stuff. People need to have yeah. questions. Yeah. We have become so polarized. Oh. I, a, lot, a, a big part of my goal, I will measure success if I can measure any difference in polarization that comes from this kind of work. Right. Right. Yeah, that's well put. Yeah, and, and when, you know, when he asked me about my faith, of course, yeah. people who... Talk about Jesus, whatever. It's just it's just part of something really popular. Yeah. You know, so as soon as they say something like that, usually, as soon as they say something like that, that's why I kind of preface it the way uh-huh. that I do. Because, but it doesn't matter what you do. We have to have these things. Is this awesome. one yours? It could that be mine. mine. Okay. Yeah. You take it, please. Um, but it's great, man. I'm gonna look it up. And I appreciate cool. it. Where are you? Hey there. What we have uh we have chicken in there. To oh, eat, so she uh-huh. completely knows that we have chicken. <laughs> and ironically, we also love chickens. Oh, the really? feathers on her hat yeah. are are from our pet chickens. Yeah. Oh, okay, okay. You ever eat chicken in front of your chicken? Yes, I do. <laughs> Which and and I am and I am painfully aware of the irony. <laughs> Are you ever gonna put that brand out? Oh man, Give, giving up on it. You know, I have ideas for days. Yeah, I have this one. I have another one called Your Club Sucks. Um, Your Club Sucks. Yeah, I like that. I had another one called Pirates and Hooligans. It was more like higher end. Um, but doing any kind of fashion without a large sum of money is virtually impossible. Mm-hmm. It's like trying to do. Uh, 
<laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, so I kind of gravitated towards helping other people who have money build their brand. Uh huh. So, okay. Cool. Okay. Well, I know how to build brands. Is that what, what you do, like to... mainly for work and stuff? Yeah. Okay. And I, and I coach. I'm a personal, like personal development. Nice, dude. Yeah, man. I get my creative, and I get my uh, inspirational one. Yeah, my human interaction. Yeah. All right, cool. Well, All right, Darren. Are you guys here every week? Uh, we are going to try to, but we're we're going to be bouncing around some different parts. Okay. Uh, well, I'll look you up and I'll probably just follow. You. Excellent. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, he's juggling lessons on YouTube and twin questions. Twin so I have like a separate channel. Yeah. yeah. yeah I'll it, 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 he's in my promoted channel list and all that kind of thing. Oh, okay. Uh, Sweet. And uh, there's a calendar. <laughs> It should allow you to see where we're going to be. Okay. Yeah. We're still working off that up between Google Calendar, Meetup. And right, you know, yeah. Stuff. I know. All Later, right, dude. See you, man. See you. this for the long haul any particular day is just how that day went okay. battery test count. Our, our goal is that any of these external batteries, I should say, this whole show operates on things like a battery like this, which right now I think is at 69. Whoop, 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 up, 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 over. Oh, okay. I don't know if you can read that or not, but right now it says 69%. Uh -huh. And uh, if it gets down to... <laughs> yep, yep, yep. <laughs> He said numbers. <laughs> uh, if it gets down to uh, fifty percent, we're switching the batteries out for the ones that are charging the van because we just want to have ridiculous. The one on your mission. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, funny numbers. Funny numbers. It's not funny if they go dead in the middle. Yeah. The, okay. <laughs> the mixer itself has four AA batteries as a backup. So if I unplug the USB to plug it into the computer or something, it'll run on those double A's, which will run it for two or three hours. If you're recording at high bit rates with a lot of channels, it's less. See, this is a good amount of amount of people. Yeah, here. this is yeah. this is the kind of people. What? That's cool. What else do you want to say? Um, those are excellent. That's excellent. These aren't even being tapped much. So I say we're good. We're golden for now. Your new batteries are Arnold Schwarzer batteries. They are badass. We've brought extra chicken. Oh, yeah. that's weird. Yeah. Did you do this? I don't know. I just noticed that it was. I think it was. Oh my! I think people can still hear me though, or else they would have said something. Interesting. Um. Okay. Good. So, guest. G U E S T is uh waiting for interlocutor. And host is juggling lessons. Oh no, I'll say I'll type it the other way. Host. 
juggling lessons in camel case. Pop. Yes, that's excellent. I'm going to go to wide only just because that's something we have. Waiting for an interlocutor. <laughs> Thank you, Ivy. Ivy Elf, I want to have you on my show at some point. It, it, uh, I'm, I'm really thinking that uh, I'd like to interview everybody who's had an SE-specific YouTube channel uh, in the last few years. Um, I'd like to uh, talk to, uh, to all of the uh, uh, SE practitioners who've had channels even in the last few years, whether they're really active or not. Uh, because going back through looking at your stuff and looking at deeper discussions and a few others with uh, it doesn't matter if a channel has current activity, it's still got valuable content. And so I'm actually putting your channel and deeper discussions, and there's one other that I'm thinking of I have on a list somewhere on the promoted channel list. Um, so you know, if and when. Mentions. Oh, we just want to get the practice. That could be good. So I think Quinn's mic was down, was actually aimed down, which was weird during part of that, uh, which means it. it I'm surprised if it sounded any good, but Kimberly didn't notice it was really bad on the on the headset. So maybe it fell down after. I don't know. Oh, nice model Y. Yes, I do Tesla watching. If there's a Tesla that goes by, I'm interested. If it's not electric, I'm like, eh, meh, don't care. Because like, I'm like that. Thank you, Gene. Sorry, I, I was hearing you say something that will increase the quality. I, 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 what? What? I was wondering if you guys would ever do a non live stream session. Sure. Okay. Yeah. Completely happy to. That would increase the quality of like the finished product. Uh, yeah, um, the post editing cost in hours, um, not worth it. It's how I was planning to do my show. Uh, but then the it, FK talked me into doing live streaming and said, Hey, you know, the number of hours you're going to spend and the quality you're going to get, look at the trade off, try it out, try it out. And oh man, did he move my confidence? Okay. Uh, and, yeah, and it's no. just, it's a trade-off thing. It's not a, it's not a yes, no. Uh, obviously, when Starlink gets here, and we have one of those sitting on the van, and we have Wi-Fi of awesomeness, then yeah. that, that'll be different. Too big of a different quality anyways, even the live stream. Yeah. Right, that's what I'm yeah, saying, yeah, is, yeah. is the live stream won't be, won't be, have a significant trade-off. Now, uh, this kind of show I also see as having a uh, uh, 80 or so percent of the value is in the audio. Yeah. Half the audience could literally be looking away and getting 100% of everything they wanted. Right. So the audio has to be really good. Yeah, I'm, 
I noticed in the first video it was like choppy, you know, cut out. Mm. Um, so, but yeah. Hope, hopefully it's better this time. Yeah. Uh, it, this is a bit pioneering. Uh, previously, this kind of thing hasn't been done live on. It's either live online. Right. I've seen Anthony do it live sometimes. Uh huh. Not, not with like the tabletop setup. Yeah, Anthony stands. Yeah. He really likes the standing thing. Uh, and Reed likes the sitting thing. And we're using Reed's kit, so we're sitting today. Yeah. I could totally see myself standing in the future. Oh, I would totally have freestanding mic stands. I'd, I'd have a mic stand and a camera stand. And maybe I'd figure out a way to have a mic stand with the camera hanging off of it. Right. Yeah. And there's a little way. And then maybe a little lectern, a music stand for. Uh... Yep. We have a thing for bones. But there's also, there's also a trash can just right over there. It's a park trash can. It's a great place for bones. Our cameras that are operating through... Uh, this remote camera website application duda duda that Ragnar suggested have been very stable as far as I can tell. What what's been stable? These camera we haven't had to reset these cameras in a couple of hours. They've been very stable. Because of the, like the tape and stuff? I mean that there's been no dropouts. Oh okay. In I'm I'm surprised that Discord hasn't caused a reset. Mm. Uh, I usually have to jump in and out of Discord two to three times an hour to reset for audio hiccups. Right. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I was gonna say. Yeah. Is FK still here? Or is he sleeping? Oh, I hope he's asleep. What time is it for him, Dina? Uh, it would be if I'm doing the quick math right. Two and a half hours past midnight for him, so two thirty okay. in the morning. Wow. We're giving away water, and we're also doing interviews. Uh, bring any any claim you think is important in your life, and we would just like to understand why you think so. Just like that. What is your name, Emily? Uh, usually this is a live stream today. It's recorded because we had live stream, uh, issues. So it'll be released in the next few days. Okay. I like your nails. Thank you. Yeah. Yep. Yep. If you, if you look right over behind me, you can see what, what is the, uh, feed that is, uh, working through there. And, and, and nutty. That feed is being assembled on a computer nine time zones away. Because, just because, like that. So fun. Yeah. Yeah, most of the time this is live. Now, there there are live people. What, like, how, how many people are in the room? Yeah, we have a Discord right now, and there are live audience. Yep. Indeed, indeed. Perfect. That's just enough. Okay, nine people. Good. Okay. So I have your consent for recording. I appreciate that. Yeah. All right. Uh, can you tell me something that you think is true? Okay. That affects your life. Okay. Makes, affects your choices. Okay. Hmm. And you can put this on to hear yourself better. Is it sanitized? I did wipe it down with one of these. Um, okay. Between each person. Wow. This is so. Wow. I've never heard myself on a. Oh, yeah, these mic. are really nice mics. Hello. Hello. Hi. <laughs> Hold on. Hello. Hello. <laughs> we'll turn to, okay, we'll, so we'll, we'll leave that knob off. I would say that uh, I would argue the belief of Jesus being the son of God. Okay. Okay. So we're going to go into religion. Mm -hmm. Jesus is the son of God. Yes. Okay. Uh, the first thing I like are definitions. 
uh, by Jesus, I assume you mean the one from the New Testament talked about in the Gospels and by Paul. Correct. Uh, the one that uh, about 2,000 years ago, give or take. Just about, yes. And uh, uh, was crucified on a cross and was buried in a tomb and resurrected after, on the third day. Not Correct. after three days, but wow. on the third day. Yes, you're so knowledgeable. Well, I grew up in a fundamentalist Christian missionary school. So, I love that. So I started, I started from that position. That's rad. Anyway. But not enough about my position. Yes. So that's the Jesus. Yes. And what does being son of God mean? Um. So he is basically like we believe that Mary, who was just a woman, mm -hmm. basically gave birth to Jesus. And God had impregnated Mary mm -hmm. and from like basically from heaven and gave Mary the yeah. son well, who heaven? was like okay. the son yeah. of God. Yeah. yeah. So, so God caused Mary to uh, be pregnant. Be pregnant. Yes. And Jesus was the result. Yes. Okay. How do you know that? Is that Just from the, Luke? What? Luke or Matthew? Uh. Well, I don't know. In the Gospels, where where does it talk about that? Yeah, we don't know. That's okay. Yeah, yeah. I guess I. Well, different Gospels. It it just you know it gives the story of the yes. birth. So it goes from Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, they, they, and yeah, all of them. They all talk about it in different forms yeah. of how they saw it but yeah that's just the belief okay oh uh, what convinced you that this was true i had a encounter with god where i felt uh basically i grew up jewish mm -hmm. and until i was about like 13 and then i was put into a church environment mm -hmm. um just because my family couldn't you know, that was just like what they did mm -hmm. to like take care of me, basically. And then I just did live my life. I was just a normal person, never thought about religion, always knew there was a higher power, mm. um, believed in like the universe, stuff like that. Believe universe, like the law of attraction, universal okay. power, you what you give in the world, you take back mm -hmm. positive mindset, all that stuff. Um, but it never was like good enough. Like I felt like it never like I never achieved what I wanted in life or things weren't happening. Mm hmm. And basically got to this place in my life where I just was seeking peace so hard and I mm. couldn't find it. And it led me to kind of go deeper into my religion and figure out what I believed. And I just had an encounter with what I believe is God through mm. Jesus, through the Holy Spirit, which okay. we believe. Yeah. The Trinity. What does that encounter look like? What was your experience? So for me, it was like I had this moment where I was like just living in a lot of like angst or anger or depression or anxiety or fear mm -hmm. just a lot of turmoil in my heart I have right so been there yeah a we lot. all have especially with the pandemic it's pretty crazy oh yeah and I just didn't want to feel like that I didn't feel like I needed to feel like that anymore mm -hmm. so I put myself in a place where I was open to Christian faith because I had been open to other faiths like Buddhism all this stuff okay. I was like you know what none of that stuff has given me like this full peace that I know is available mm-hmm and I opened the Bible and I just had this like overwhelming sense of love and peace, like more than I had ever felt in my life, more than any song could give you any hike or mountaintop or even having sex, like anything mm -hmm. more like that was just mm. the most peace and so, love that I had ever felt. And I couldn't go back. So it was a, it was a, an outstanding experience experience yeah uh, it was almost like a, i've done like psych psychedelics and stuff and it was okay. even like greater than that okay yeah even better than lsd yeah cool. all right <laughs> indeed um, he knows everything now <laughs> <laughs> don't share anything that, that, that you want to hold oh no i don't care fine. everyone knows <laughs> yeah that's all fine um so you had you had an experience that was really outstanding unusual yes was this once or was this uh something that happened over again well it started at that one time and then when i was open and then i like gave myself over to basically that faith uh -huh. that belief system i believe in the bible i believe that jesus is the son of god that happened a lot and now i feel like i just ah. like live in that place and we believe it's called the fruits of the spirit uh -huh. so there's like joy peace you know, all these things that we have access to fullness of. Do uh -huh. I live in that every single day? No, I get angry. Like things happen. Like 
but I do have access to that if wanted. I have a friend that um, asked me to watch a, it was actually a sermon on the history of the Vineyard Church. Oh, I love the Vineyard. And and they used a lot of the same terms you're talking about, yeah. the fruits of the spirit, things of mm-hmm. that order. Yeah, it's cool. And I think like over time, like when I first got in faith, it was like I had so much nastiness in me from okay. like time of just hurt and pain and trauma that I felt like God had to really refine my heart over time. And it seems a little bit easier for me to like live in the fruit of the spirit or those things tend to be a little bit easier for me to access than they were in my first years of walking in faith. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. That's it. Um, okay. So if I had, if I had somebody who was, uh, from a different religion. Yes. I love who that. reported that they had essentially the same experience. I'm yeah. just going to take your experience and I'm going to cross out the smallest amount of detail that I can totally. and make it theirs. Yeah. Uh, should I know the difference between yours and their experience as to what they should, could, could <clears throat> sorry, should conclude from that? I think that for me, like, for me, like, my faith is so certain. Like, I have no disbelief at all that what okay. I believe is not real and I what in my experience like I totally so so your your needle is right there yeah you can't take it away from okay, me I can, I see the needle, <laughs> needle all the way to the end okay so for me holy like holy crap there's 300 foot no 100 cyclists just went past really fast okay so Sorry, slightly distracted. with my experience like I have talked to people I literally had a conversation with someone who was like agnostic yesterday and he, he's experienced uh-huh. similar things but for me and my faith, like, I just, I feel that that's the, that is the only way to experience the fullness of life is through Jesus. That's okay. just like my belief. So I don't know. So I can't, I can't argue what someone else experienced, but I would also question, have they sought, even tried to seek out any other like source basically? Like, have they ever tried to, like, have mm-hmm. access to Jesus in that way, too? Interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Which I did, was actually I did an interview with a fellow who was a very devout Muslim uh-huh. uh, a few weeks ago. And, I love that. And, and he was as certain as you are. Yeah. And the story was similar, although in his case, he used a lot more philosophy to cover some of the whys that he believe some of the details. Yeah. Uh, so his argument was mostly philosophical and partially experiential. Cool. How should I choose between? As because in his case, yeah, he would he would deny the divinity of Christ. He would yeah. say Christ didn't die; Christ was removed, and they have a different story in the Quran. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, about it. Yeah. And that Jesus would be a prophet rather than a divine component of the Trinity or something. Yeah. Um, I've, ta- I've actually, I have a friend that's like Muslim and I love their culture. I love their religion. Um, I don't, I don't have a solid answer for that. I just think that for me, it's like, I can, I would have to like connect with that person and hear like where, who, who they are and what their heart is. For me, I really like judge or like have an opinion based on like the fruit of their life. Like mm. how is their life, not like financially or like this right. or that, but like, All right. Please tell me if audio is correct. Yes. Uh, audio good. Uh, also, uh, what 
did you hear last? And we'll pick it up from there. I've got a couple of people typing the answer. Oh, I love me. that. Yeah, there's a there's a there's a small room full of people listening and paying attention to this That's as we go. Cool. You can tell them I'm I'm a 26 year old. <laughs> yes. I'm 26. Emily is 26. I'm 26. And they can hear you as well as they oh, can good. hear me. Although you're you're back from the mic, but that's okay. Oh, I can, okay, I can come I can back. Listen. I can come forward. Either way, I I have a no, I have a knob here. Oh, okay. That is the closer knob. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, make it fancy. Closer. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So a nice fancy little board. It's amazing when I can get 2020 for just a couple hundred bucks. It's crazy. It's it's sweet. Okay. Uh, pick me up. Where were we before the audio drop off? Do you recall what I asked last? I was asking for five. Yeah, the, the five yeah. fruits of the spirit on the hand. So, peace, patience, yeah. joy, love, self control. Okay, is patience and self control separate? Uh, yeah. Okay. Uh huh. Tell me how I could be patient without having self control. How could you be patient? Without having self control, yeah. Could I be patient without having? It doesn't seem like I could. Could you be patient without have? Yeah, you could. In okay. a way, I think. If I was patient, but I didn't have self control, maybe I'd be very fidgety. Yeah, you could be like impulsive. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, okay. So the other one, self control without being patient, I could be. But like, but being not having that, a good attitude. Yeah. About it. Yeah, for sure. Okay. So I, I see those differences. Yeah. Okay. Very good. I mean, I could be patient with time, but still do things that I shouldn't be doing, not have self-control, mm -hmm. right? So, like, even with, like, this is my life, but, like, dating, I could have patience to get married, but I could still do things that would not be good to want to end that, that goal. Okay. I want to talk to you about... This is all a digression here. Go. Tic Would you agree that there is an even or an odd number of Tic Tacs in the box? Are you asking me a question? Yes. Would you agree that that is that the number of Tic Tacs in there is necessarily either even or odd? Sure. Okay. If he said it was even and she said it was odd, uh -huh. are one of them wrong? Uh, yeah. Okay. Cool. Oh. That's right? It. Yes, I agree. Is that a trick question? There are a lot of people who see truth and reality yes. in a true for me and could be different for you kind of yeah. way. And that's just a very fast way to find out if we're in that category and we got to think about truth in a relativistic or got if we can think of it in a in a more like there is a single objective reality sense. Yes, I get you. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I have logic. Yes. I'm not all mystical. That's that's good. <laughs> if that's, that's what you're really asking good. me. Yeah, um, and I found some very logical people who also think interesting things about how reality works. That makes sense, I've though. Got, I've got some very intelligent people who are yeah. idealists, huh. who think that the material world is actually just an extension of minds. Huh, that's cool. And might not exist, but minds exist. Huh, that's interesting. Yeah, it's a way to get out of dualism. Yeah, that makes sense. Do you know dualism? Um, I mean, I think uh, you Th can explain. That there's material world and a spiritual world, yeah. and they both necessarily exist? Yeah. Yeah? Or where do you stand on that? Do you see? Um, I, I, I believe that, yeah. Okay. I believe that there's material wor world, and then there's also a spiritual world. Okay. How, how would you be able to test whether the spiritual world exists? <sighs> I mean, <sighs> material world, I think there might be really obvious tests, yes? Uh-huh. How do I get to the spiritual world? I mean, I think we all have souls, so okay. I think that's a spiritual thing. I think that you have a body, which is a material thing, you can see it, but you can't see a soul or a spirit. Right. Right? So. Right, I can't. No. But when you die, your body's here, which is material, and there's something that goes away, yeah. which takes away your life, which is your breath, or you could say soul or spirit or whatever. Uh-huh. But it's something that you can't see, untangible. It, does the soul live on after the after the body? I mean, that's I. That's what I believe. I believe in heaven. Okay. Yeah. How could we test that? Um. Hmm. Like spiritually about death? Are you asking me? Well, I'm. I'm still on whether souls exist. Uh huh. And I'm wondering how we could 
gain good confidence uh -huh. about the answer about whether souls exist? Hmm. How could we test the case? Well, I think, I mean, I don't know. I believe that souls exist because I connect with you and I believe that you have okay. a soul. I don't believe that you're just a body. I think that when you, like me looking at your eyes, mm -hmm. right? It's like there's something deeper there than just your eyes. Like there's a connection. Okay. It's an experience. Yes. And I know that sounds like well fluffy, but it, we all I'll take it as you say. We all I'm experience it, yeah. like just on a day to day basis. So I don't know if there's any like proven. It's a it's a it's a faith thing. It's you can't prove faith. It's you know it's like it's a belief. You I believe that we have a soul. I have that experience with my pets. Okay, Does I that think mean your my pets, pets have, have souls? souls. Yeah, why not? So, do pet souls live on after they die? I hope. Okay. Or do they go to the same heaven that I would? I don't know why they wouldn't. Okay. Yeah. All right. All right. So you're right up, right up on the slam of the end of the, uh, on on terms of your confidence. I'm my 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 confidence meter for you on this is right up on the edge. Yes. It's pegged to the to the topic. Absolutely. So my next question might not make any sense. Okay, that's fine. What could hypothetically raise your confidence? Uh, if it doesn't make any sense, I could ask it as. Would there? Would you like? Is is there some proof that you could get? You don't have now um, that would make maybe it easier for somebody else to believe it. I think that, like, I mean, I've heard stories of people dying and going to like see light, near death and experience, like that. Uh -huh. Yeah, or having encounters with like an angel or something. I think for me, if I experienced that, uh -huh. like fully or solid with my own self or whatever, then I think it would make it a little bit more of a tangible proof but it, i don't think it would change my faith because i think it, i would already still believe the same right the same I'm, I'm asking for something yeah. that would increase um i don't know i think just like i think god like if i think an increase in faith would be like me believing for things for a long period of time and then god actually coming through in those things okay like praying i believe in prayer i believe in the power of prayer and if God answers prayers, it raises my belief. So your confidence could be improved by tangible answers to prayers. Yeah. That's a great, great hypothetical. Yeah. How about the other one? You knew I was going to ask that. Yeah. Yeah. Well, okay. How about the one that would reduce your confidence in the claim? Um, and it could be either the claim. There's several that we've talked about, yeah. whether spirits exist. I, but it seems yeah. like it's all tied together. Yeah. I think for me, it's like the 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 not fully understanding of why things happen in uh, our life. Like if a friend, something happens to my friend, I'm like, God, why did you do that? Why did you give her that word belief? And then it not happen. That's hard. It makes me like have lack of faith. Cause it's like, I can't wrap my mind around if a God is so good. Why would he not, not do X, Y, and Z? Mm -hmm. But God is in a slot machine. We can't just ask him for everything. And then life happens. Right. 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 So it, yeah. But then, it's like, I love him. I, or I love my belief. I love what I believe in. And I, I mm -hmm. believe that he believes in me type of thing. He loves me right back. So it puts me right back on track. I okay. believe that he wants good for me. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. I really enjoyed this conversation. Yay, I'm so glad. Thank you. I don't want to hide behind neutrality. If you want to ask me any questions, I'm happy to be clear. Part of this street epistemology uh -huh. is that I come from such a neutral place. Yeah, that's cool. That. If I do it right, you can't tell my position on your topic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I get you. Yeah. Yeah. I know what you believe. I can see it. Oh. Tell me. I don't know. No. <laughs> <laughs> People in the room know. Oh, yeah? Most of them know me. Yeah. I mean, you seem like a good man. I feel like you believe in good things. I believe in good things. Yeah. I don't know if you have an answer. and That's okay. An answer to which question? My question, my answer. Whether God exists? Yeah. I am about there. Oh, so I had a feeling. It's okay. Yeah. I I was uh I was a Christian for the first say two decades or so. Love that. And then I spent we're gonna say in very round numbers a decade trying out the comparative religions course yes. of, of doing it myself. Uh huh. Bouncing through Buddhism trying to take the buffet of religions. Um, and I, in 2000, landed on Judaism and got really into it through about 2007. Have you been to Israel? I have not. Oh, you gotta go. <laughs> so fun. 
Not going to happen this year. I know. <laughs> <laughs> Not this year or next, but it, it might be fun to go sometime. That would be that would be an eye-opening experience. So you landed on the Judaism, and and then I, I lost my faith uh, in the two thousand seven and eight category. Okay. I was uh, teaching in the. Uh, I was a big part of the youth program at the temple. Uh huh. And uh, I was I did a really in-depth study starting in 05 uh-huh. on the Pentateuch. Uh-huh. Uh, and then when I got to uh, Deuteronomy 4.2, that was the straw that broke the camel's back. Hmm. Uh, don't change the, don't change any part of this. Don't add anything to this mm-hmm. in a book that was written in a much later version of Aramaic yeah. and added two thirds to the law. Yeah. Two thirds of the law is in Deuteronomy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And and that was the cognitive dissonance that that was the straw that broke the camel's back. Hmm. And within about a year, I was clearly an atheist, and I couldn't argue with it anymore. Crazy. Yeah. Wow. For me, the last straw was validity of scripture. Yeah. So you don't believe that scripture is real or full, full fullness of all that we can experience or knowledge? Yeah. Wise? I I think I'm of the opinion that scripture was written by humans yeah and that i i think that man created god and god did not create man huh that's so wild i love that's that where I'm, that's where i'm at that's interesting that's cool it's a good perspective is it i mean it's yours yes yeah, <laughs> yeah. i don't i mean i don't believe that but i hear you. i think that i think scripture is it's good to take it literally it's so important but it also it gives life to god and I think religion is dangerous sometimes because I think mm. it, it brings, like, it doesn't bring truth to God's full character. Ah. And we make it a God. Like, we make religions a God instead of God as an entity in itself. I can like, see I can an, see what you mean, yeah. experience, yeah. It turns into something that you put in front of the thing that you're trying to Yeah, and then it just blocks us and, from actually yeah. living full lives. And I think people get really confused about that. But My rabbi used to say... Uh, as soon as a teacher says a word, it falls out of their mouth like a rock, and then people start worshiping the rock. Yeah, it's really scary. <laughs> you got to be careful. But yeah. what was your name? I'm Dolly. Dolly, nice to meet you. Yeah, uh, I'm also known as Juggling Lessons. I love that. And that's Quinn. Hey, Hi. nice to meet you. Yeah. That's Tyler. Hello, Tyler. Well, Tyler, do you have a, a few moments? Do you want to talk? Are we never going to eat? <laughs> Well, I'll be praying for you. Thank you. Whatever God has on your life is good. You believe in him or not. Hey. Uh, let's see. Quick wipe. Yeah. <laughs> All right, yeah. Thank you. Frank away. Hey, man, what's your name? Tyler. Tyler, good to meet you, dude. What's your name? I'm Quinn. Quinn? Good to meet yeah. you, man. You guys just walking around the Rose Bowl, or? Uh, we're just doing a little workout over there where she, I was trying to impress her with my workout <laughs> ability, and she killed me, so it was yeah, great. Yeah, like, like, I can't feel my glutes. Oh, it's man. It's bad. Yeah. Yikes. Yeah, as to say, I won't be sitting down for a couple days. <laughs> it won't be good. Yeah. Those, uh, the glute killers are really what, like, I don't know. Yeah. Like every time I haven't been to the gym in forever because of COVID, but yeah. every time I do like like ass workouts, yeah, they're the ones that kill me the most for some reason. I yeah, because I just never work it out. But um, same, dude. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's a plank of wood there back for me. So. It is good for dudes to have a nice ass, though. Yeah, you know, like I mean, sure, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah I would love one. I mean, me come too. on, man. Yeah. Like, geez, dude. I didn't know. Like, you know, ladies, ladies dig it too. But yeah, um, yeah. So. <laughs> You kind of got a sense of what we're doing here, like a little bit, yeah. Just picking a belief that you hold to be important. Yeah. Um, I like it when it's like a contentious belief. Okay. You know, but yeah. it doesn't have to be. It could just be something that's really that you hold deeply true. Yeah, absolutely. Do you have anything like that? I mean, I'm probably actually the same, right, with her, with what we're talking about, especially okay. if it's a, a new interviewer or interviewee. Uh-huh. Um, yeah. Is that? No, that's um, perfect. Yeah, I hold basically the Christian faith to be absolutely the most important thing in my own life okay. and something that I believe to be inherently true. Uh-huh. Um, and I know that's very, uh, could go a lot of ways in today's culture and society. And right. so, so, um, by inherently true, 
What do you mean? Yeah. I think a lot of people um, inside the world, they can either, you know, maybe say pick and choose or pick only their favorite parts of the Christian faith. And whereas for me, I believe um, kind of with what, even what she was saying is that the fullness of the gospel, um, even though some parts may or may not be hard to take is that I, I really believe that um, Christ did come to save the world from um, all the stuff that's gone on. Okay. And that that is a, and there's really, there's not really any other way to say it beyond how it, how it is in the Bible. Okay. And so, so would you just, I'm, bad with like terms and labels and stuff totally totally chill would you describe yourself as a fundamentalist Ooh, so this is so bad because i even went to bible college uh -huh. i can't even describe what the fundamentalist meaning may be for right. you um i would say when i what i describe to people when i say is i i believe um in the bible and try and stick as close to what the bible teaches um with with what i believe as well okay if that falls into fundamentalism then potentially yeah I think it's kind of hard to say what a fundamentalist is. Yeah. I know the first time I heard the word was like, like uh, associated with like Ken Ham and mm. like uh, people who think like uh, dinosaurs didn't never existed or that they existed like 3000 years ago mm. or something like this. Yeah. Um, and I think people tend to take different um, approaches as to how literal they think the Bible is yeah. or how like symbolic it is. Absolutely. Do you think it's, all the stories there literally happened symbolically a mixture of both yeah yeah it's a great question um i get that one uh, pretty often as well is that like some people might say you know with something like noah's ark like yeah, was yeah, it yeah. just like a big rain that happened or something yeah. you know i mean for me i don't really have any reason to doubt that it you know a, a massive flood could have happened and wiped out most of life on earth um i don't really you know, for me, I just kind of take it as it is. And there's things that we take out of the Bible that are like, okay, this is something really good for me to take away from as well. Right. Um, but yeah, I pretty much believe mostly what it says. Okay. Even when it comes especially to Jesus, um, you know, rising from the dead, actually dying, coming back, all those things. So you believe, for example, that Noah's Ark wasn't like a symbolic thing. It literally happened. Yeah. Okay. Personally, I do believe that. Yeah. Okay. Um, Unless something else were to challenge that. But for the most part, for me, it seemed to be. Um, true. Yeah, absolutely why do you think it's true yeah great great question um so uh, for me what i've kind of seen um you know even just for me mainly looking towards like with the start of humanity um i, I might even take it back even to, like an adam and eve that it seems like it's very more plausibly scientific that we came from you know we all have the same sort of lineage okay that it didn't like happen a bunch of different ways but there was like we all come from seems like the same two people right um an adam and eve type character and then of course noah and you know the people he brought hat with him on the ark we all come from then there as well okay um but that's that's more so where i'd get that from okay um as far as maybe like proof of a boat or something i know there's claims right. out there i don't know if those are true so but you were you were talking about literally the specifically the claim of noah's ark i'm wondering why i guess um why you hold the bible to be true it, is it something like that is it like a historical or genealogical evidence or, or something yeah um those lines so well i'll just give you my start my start essentially i was agnostic growing up um so I, in a christian home but became agnostic for many years okay didn't know if it was like buddha if it was allah if it was you know anything if it was judaism or christianity was it had Christ. the idea that it was something yeah i was yeah. like there's no way that i could look at this earth and like these people and and say that there's not that this wasn't by happenstance that this okay. something had to happen this like all the creativity just in the human eye how much it takes to, like, so put it's, all fair, that together. it's fair to say that that maybe that's your default at least is um it's never been atheism there's yeah. always been some sort of like the complexity of the world is an implication that there's intelligent design maybe. absolutely okay. yeah got yeah. it so you were you grew up you grew up in a christian household mm -hmm. but you became agnostic at some point mm -hmm. and then began like a new search yeah absolutely what, what happened then so essentially um i was <laughs> it was kind of an encounter i would say is the only way i could put it um not not like an alien encounter to get you know, shot up into a ship or something but if only it were that easy right oh my gosh <laughs> man i'd be like check that thing out it was crazy yeah uh but for me it was essentially i was just riding my bicycle um down by a river had like some life choices i was trying to make and it was almost as if like it was like i, I understood that like i had two paths i could take one of them led to christ and like a life following him mm -hmm. and then it just led down the path of sin and like things i was doing and I just, I looked at my life and it was almost like, God was like, you got to make a choice here. Okay. And I chose to go that way and immediately started the Bible college, split my whole life around. Never, everything's never been the same since then. What, so wait, what prompted you to make that choice? Yeah, it was essentially that I was just, <laughs> this is going to sound so crazy to some people, but essentially I had an encounter with, you know, with God. Okay. So even like when Paul was, you know, riding his donkey down the path or whatever, and his like, 
I can't remember if he fell off the donkey or whatever happened, but essentially like it was almost as if God was like, I have, I have a plan for you. Like, do you want that plan or do you want to keep living your life the way that you have? Okay. And in that moment, like I knew it was Christ and I knew that it was, it was God. How'd and you, I decided to know? choose that. I, I can't, I can't ever describe really how it wasn't like, he was like, I am God like, <laughs> of the Bible. It was just like, I inherently knew. Okay. Like it was like, if, if someone, if your father calls your voice or if someone familiar to you calls mm-hmm. out to you, um, you're like, I know who that is. That's they helpful, don't have to say their name. It's a helpful analogy. Yeah. So that's, that's how I would say it felt to me. Okay, so you you had, and was it, um, I know it's really, well, I imagine it's really hard to describe spiritual mm. experiences like that. Yeah. I've had spiritual spiritual experiences of the kind like uh, that she was describing with psychedelics, but I yeah. haven't had one quite like a one-on-one with God. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah, um, absolutely. But is, is there a way that you could describe it? Like, was it a voice or was it like a feeling? It was as if, um, gosh, that's a, great, that's a really good question, actually. It was just as if almost like understanding came to me is the way that I would say it. Okay. So if you were like trying to figure out a math question for a long time, you just couldn't find the answer. And all of a sudden just, you had the answer. Mm. And it was like, it was as if God was like, I am the answer. Are you going to choose me? Or are you going to choose just the life that just feels good? Do whatever you want, even though you know I am the answer. Okay. Are you going to accept me or reject me? Right. And so it's kind of like I had the answer. Mm. What was I going to do with that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so okay. that's kind of my reckoning, I would say. So, just a few more questions. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so, okay, so it was an encounter that you had, and it was. I, I, I like the father analogy. I like the um, the math equation analogy. And I'm going to ask you a question that he asked her, which yeah. was, uh, if um, if someone like uh, came to another religious belief in a yeah. similar way, yeah. Um, different god or gods Mm -hmm. uh would you see would you see that method as a reliable method for them Mm. like um if someone told you uh you know krishna spoke to me or like some different hindu god spoke to me and told me that this that uh this is the way that the world is yeah i should worship them uh would you see that as reliable that's that's actually the, the best question to ask um what I would say to someone that's going through something like that, when I was agnostic and I was looking at other religions, mm-hmm. and even when I was, um, as a Christian, looking into um, other religions, like I've interviewed people of other faiths, kind of essentially what you guys are doing, where it's not, you're okay. not trying to come against it, you're just trying to under- get a better understanding of what they're saying, yeah, exactly. and you're not trying to rebuttal any of that. Yeah. Um, so in doing that, even with my own stuff, it was, uh, the way that I would say is, with that, I've never met a religion like Christianity where, I don't have to do or be or become anything Mm. like all it is, is come to me. Like, I just want you to come to me. You're my creation. Like I want you to be with me. Mm -hmm. A lot of other religions and a lot of other faiths, they say I want you to do all these things in order to reach me. Right. Whereas it's on me to like make it happen. Otherwise I don't make it. Whereas God's like, I made the sacrifice. Like I came to the earth to die for you so that you could be with me. Mm -hmm. And that's it. Okay. Like, yes, he calls us to be holy and yes, he calls us to follow him and walk with him. Yeah. But at the end of the day, it's grace instead of works. And what I've found with most any other religion is that you have to do some sort of works in order to get there. Uh. And that to me has been the biggest decider for me was that if this is all real, like I'll never earn my way to heaven. Like I've done some messed up stuff. Like I'm not going to get there uh-huh. unless someone reaches out and grabs me. Okay. And s- someone did essentially. Exactly. Okay. Mm. Um. So I'm trying to understand this concept of uh, like works versus grace. Yeah. And absolutely. you're saying that's so like some religions you have to change, maybe change how you are as a person and, and make an effort to, to, re- to receiving benefits from the religion maybe, or, or yeah. being in, the, in good graces with those. But you're saying that with, with Christianity, you don't have to do that. So that's a good question with Christianity. It's more of a, um, in order to get there, in order to have a relationship, mm-hmm. you don't have to be anything but as you are and accepting of what Christ has done. Okay. And then out of that, um, you know, it's like if, you, if we have a relationship, uh-huh. we're going to have a great relationship if like I'm constantly like, walk, like walking with you, talking with you, yeah. hanging out, like yeah. wanting to, you know, not like, please, you might not be the right word, but like <laughs> wanting to um, just be active. Yeah, yeah. Wanting to wanting to be your friend, like right, right, be right. in a relationship with you. Uh-huh. Um, but with other things, it's like, do you uh, um i just lost my train of thought in saying that 
Um, so what I, the question I was asking, yeah. and I think you were getting to it, was yeah. essentially it's my after workout brain happening right now. <laughs> <laughs> Is that better or worse? after workout it's It's worse for me yeah Um, so what i was asking is you you brought up like christianity is different in the sense that you uh with these religions there's works you have to work towards it and you were just saying that you don't with christianity you're not called to be anything that you're not um yeah you just you just have a relationship with this god Mm -hmm. and i'm gonna come exactly as you are right if you like just hooked up with someone and like people be like oh my gosh you just hooked up with someone go to church get saved doesn't make a difference mm. like or if you like went to church got saved and then you went and did something you know bad and you're like god i repent that was so stupid i don't know why i just did that god's like i still love you okay you know interesting I'm... but we are called to be holy yeah but it's not how you get into heaven is being holy you could be the holiest man on the planet and never accept jesus and go to hell and yeah with, with my faith that you would not make it into heaven um so i'm wondering like so that's that's one side of the coin. Yeah. The other side, I think, would be like if you were actually uh, horrible, lived a life full of sin, mm-hmm. rape, murder, etc. Yeah. Um, but then maybe towards the end you get saved. Yeah. And you accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, like in your dying breath, maybe. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That type of person does go to heaven. That may be a very controversial opinion, but I would say yes. With okay. even with like prison ministry, which is one of, I think the most beautiful ministries out there even though there's some people that have done horrible things and that absolutely do deserve to be in prison and pay for what they've done. Uh-huh. But yet Christ still died for them too. Right. Even Christ with his, he was on the cross and there's a man the next to him, thieves. another man. Yeah. Yeah. So there's a thief and another thief. One of them chooses not to accept him. Right. It then says like, I can't remember his exact words, but essentially God says today you'll be with me in paradise. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that was his dying breath. He dies having lived a life terrible, but then in his last moment, just like a, a rapist or a murderer or someone that you know was a thief, they would go to heaven. Interesting. Okay. And so to me, that grace is extended to everybody. It's just, will you accept it? Yeah. And then I'd be curious if those people, you know, if they were on death row and accepted Christ, but then they weren't on death row anymore for some reason, how would they would they live still... the rest of their life. Right, right, right. Okay. But interest. Uh, that's an interesting thought. Yeah. Um, Which is so encouraging to me because it's like, no matter what I've done in my past or will, you know, do in the future, if I love Christ, I'm not saying it's not an excuse to sin. There's no excuse right. to like go out and, do terrible things not at all but but i like that because i think it's open to everybody a lot a lot of the the christians that i've talked to and one thing that kind of maybe irked me is that like Mm. um a lot of them i think they only act right because they want a reward out of it oh yeah or they only act uh when they when they act wrong they're only they're only scared because of the fact that they feel like they've sinned and then that they might go to hell yeah but this what you're this, what you're saying is like um it sounds like slavery i mean there's freedom in the bible like right. you've sinned and yes like there's conviction there's yeah. two different types of like feeling bad there's condemnation which okay. says you're you're never going to make it like you're destined for hell mm-hmm. but there's conviction which says i love you and i want you to change and that you know like there's freedom in that whereas condemnation is like no like it puts you down conviction like it's like i want you to change let me raise you back has up. god ever condemned anyone um, oh, that's a great question. The Holy Spirit is as a convictor, condemnation. Uh, we, I would say we condemn ourselves. And mm-hmm. so out of not choosing to accept Jesus, we actively condemn ourselves. Okay. And so it's God's holy and he can't allow anything that's not holy in his presence. Christ's blood covers us. That's what makes us holy. It's not anything I'm doing. It's, it's Christ. Okay. And the accepting Christ. And not, not like blood physically, but essentially right. putting on what Christ has done. Yeah. Okay. And then um, we would condemn ourselves by not choosing that. Okay, so we do it to ourselves. Mm. That's where uh, the free will aspect comes in. Right. That's another, that's a whole. It's a whole other can of worms. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, just a couple more questions. Yeah. Uh, in the kind of God that you've described, how, on a scale of zero to 100, how confident are you that this God exists? Uh, for me, it'd be a 10. I would, 10 I would willingly 10. give my life for Christ. Okay. Yeah. That's a 10 out of 10, right? Mm. Okay. Um, is there, oh, why i think you might have already explained is the reason you're so confident because of the um the encounter that you had Mm, that's a good question i would say that was a great catalyst to this um and then over that was for me that was 10 years ago at 18 okay i'm 28 now over those 10 years what i've seen christ do and i've I've traveled to many nations and and preached and spoke and and seen god work in so many other people's lives Mm -hmm. i just can't deny what i've seen with my own two eyes i mean for me to say it doesn't exist, I'd have to be like looking at you and saying you're not here. 
Um, it just for me, I, I couldn't, I couldn't make that distinction. It's interesting. And there's been times that relationship with me and God gets tough, and I'm like, oh God, like is this worth it? But I always come back to, you are real. For me to deny this would be to deny truth for me. It's so interesting. Like we're both sitting here, like you know, reasonable people, but yeah. just two totally different perspectives. Absolutely. You know I mean? Which is, I, I love that we can both come together yeah. and just yeah, have a combo. Kind of, that's kind of the point of, of this sort of a thing. Yeah. Um, we need more of that. Yeah, definitely. What are, uh, what are your thoughts with all that? Or, or am I allowed to ask questions back and totally receive your opinion? I, and I want to answer that maybe at the end of like maybe three minutes from now. Okay. Um, yeah. Hey, I'm open book. So, someone here has a, a question. Do we ever condemn ourselves if we've gone our whole lives without ever hearing of Jesus? Ooh. So that is a great question. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. That's so I believe that we all have like kind of an, an inkling in our hearts um, that we all like, like it's almost like we feel empty. So from the day that we're born, we, we're always trying to feel something, whether we fill that with with sex, we fill it with drinking, whether we fill it with, with religion, whatever we fill that with, we all feel a, a need for something more. Mm-hmm. And, and if so, whether or not you've heard the name of Jesus, it's such a good question. Say you're a tribe in the Amazon, right? You've yeah. never heard of anything. Uh-huh. I don't know if I could fully answer this question, yes or no, because I, I don't have all the answers, but I believe that the Holy Spirit could be reaching out to people, essentially God that inkling in your heart that's like, I know there's something more out there, but I don't know what it is. So you think even if you've never heard of Jesus, he reaches out or the Holy Spirit reaches out to you. Yeah. So as Christians, we're called to go out and spread the gospel mm-hmm. um, so that, so that all can hear. Yeah. If someone's never had the opportunity to hear such a good question, I'm, I'm not saying I could confidently answer what that would look like, right. but my, my, the best way I could answer that would be that the Holy Spirit, that inkling in your heart is pushing them towards like, trying to discover that and whether they know the name of jesus or not if they're worse from the creator and they believe that like okay. it, it's it's so it, they it can be a very jesus that that i would say if you don't know the name i don't know it's okay. it's an area where i'd have to do a lot more research on because i know where that rabbit trail could take somebody right like maybe muslims and christians believe in the same god and like they've just been describing him all weird but maybe it's the same spirit reaching out so my, my opinion or take on that, because that's a great that's a great question to ask, would be how what's what's the mode of transportation to get there? Because those are two different mm-hmm. ways of doing that yeah. through Christ and through believing upon his death and saying, I accept Jesus as as God and equal to God and that God and the Holy Spirit, the three are in one. Mm-hmm. Um, it's it's a very it says, like, I am the truth, like uh, I'm the way, the truth and the life. And like it's only through him. Right. And so for me, other other ways of doing that, other pathways, even though I get what you're saying, it, it wouldn't be um the right right. it wouldn't be able to access with that okay yeah um i want to just go back and then we could i'll tell you kind of my thoughts on it but um i want to quickly go back to because you said that uh your encounter was one was a catalyst for your 100 percent belief your 10 out of 10 Mm -hmm. belief in this god um but it's also your personal experience like going to different places Mm -hmm. um is it anything else uh because those are both those are both understandable reasons. Um, is there any like, uh, does the Bible confirm it for you? Or it's mm, a good question. So I think, I think it's more so the Bible to, to me. Like it, it does confirm, but it's more of a greater understanding of who Christ is and what He wants me doing with my life. Yeah. It's more um, of a yeah, for me, it's it's just been it's been the journey with Christ that's really confirmed it for me. Like I, there's good people and bad people everywhere. Um, so even in the church, I've been wronged by people in the church. I've had enough reasons to go and leave the church, to be angry at the church, never return to a church. But I keep coming back to like the person of Christ and like who God is in that relationship. For me, that's what seals the deal. Okay. And so that that relationship I've been with Christ last 10 years has really been like, this is for real. So even when all these things come against me, even if it's from the Christian church, mm-hmm. um, or even if, you know, I don't agree fully with what someone's saying, then it's it's always just been Jesus for me. Okay. Yeah. That way, that way, no one, nothing else is my salvation, but but my or but God, right? And your yeah. relationship with Him, is exactly. Really the only thing, okay, yeah. Um, is the last question for real this time? Is, yeah, no, is there anything that you could learn today or tomorrow, a piece of evidence or even a new experience that would disconfirm your belief mm. or falsify it or cause doubt? or something yeah it's a, it's a really good question um for me it would probably be um dying and not going anywhere or like nothing happening <laughs> it probably have to be death because i've had oh. i've had so much proof for myself here on the earth okay that so, the only way to disprove that would be there's no nothing on to meet the maker living, or in not your, meet in your living life there's nothing that could sway you with 
down the scale. Yeah, not not that I've seen so far. Okay. Um, and, and almost like what my what Emily was saying is that you see people go through terrible things. It's like, God, why is this happening? Like, I don't understand why that person had to die or why my friend had an overdose or committed suicide or why my, you know, a loved one got COVID and yeah. could have passed away. Um, there's a lot of things that like can tr- try and come against that. But at the end of the day, like, I believe I serve a good and loving God uh, and also a holy God. Okay. And so it's, yeah, I, nothing can really sway me at this point. Yeah. All right, yeah. man. Well, I think I, I sort of understand where you're coming from. Yeah. Um, it's kind of an intense, maybe an intense faith that I have, but it's like, man, I just, I just know for myself, I know this is the deal. Oh yeah. yeah. I, I, I respect it. Um, Absolutely. I think I've, I've had, I, I have like a weird relationship uh, or a weird past when it comes to religion. I yeah. think um, half of my family was secular and atheist. And then mm-hmm. the other half, like my dad's side was uh, like Christian. They went to like a Baptist church. You know? Okay. And yeah. uh, on most weekends I'd go with my grandma to church and there was uh, about a two, one to two year period of my life, which was the only period in my life where I believed. Um, yeah. I, yeah. I think I lied to her before then and I told her that I believed. <laughs> I've done that too. Yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> like just to make her happy. You're like, go, uh, just shut up. Like, I don't want to talk yeah, about it. <laughs> exactly. Like, oh, yeah. Um, but yeah. I had this experience in church where um, I don't know if they, the, the church that I went to is kind of, loud full of energy full of life lots okay. of music lots of uh speaking in tongues passing out from the heat yada, oh yada, wow yada. yeah yeah and um what an experience i had was uh the pastors at the end of the sermon they'd like um, they'd put their hands out like this and then you would go and they'd touch you on your forehead like that yeah and you'd look down and they'd pray for you mm. and um it had happened to me a few times before i would always just sit there with my eyes closed unaffected yeah. There was this one time where he said, uh, like, he seemed to speak to everything that was going on in my life, you know, wow. all the problems. I was like a really angsty 13 year old boy. So, yeah, I was going through a lot of problems and uh, we even had a talk at the end of it. And he told me, like, I can I can see your relationship with God beginning and I can I can tell you're going to be do the, do this great thing. And, yeah, um, you know, it just it was what I needed at the time. And so I. Yeah. I started reading the Bible and I started getting into it. I think ultimately um, my personal, uh, the, the reason I got out of it again was because I have, um, I hold reason and evidence mm-hmm. um, and I guess intuition as my methods of getting to the truth. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And there wasn't, for me, there was a lot of logical inconsistencies in the Bible, mm-hmm. and there wasn't enough evidence for me to continue my continue the belief. Yeah. Um, so that's where I'm at. I'm I'm open minded. Yeah. But I'm at the moment I, I don't believe in the Christian God yeah. or any of the like purported gods like Muslim. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Can I ask maybe a deeper question to what you're saying? Yeah. Would you? Are you? It sounds like you may be agnostic, further removed, or are yeah, you? Yeah. So I think. I don't know if this works, but I think I'd make a distinction between a like agnosticism is in mm-hmm. reference to uh, knowledge. Yeah. Like it's like, I don't know if God exists. Okay. Atheist is like, um, I don't believe in, in particular gods. Like I'm an atheist in regards to Zeus. Okay. I'm an atheist in regards to Yahweh. Yeah. I'm an atheist in regards to Poseidon and so on and so forth. All yeah. down the line, yeah, the whole gambit of gods out yeah, there, whole, yeah, every, yeah, almost, almost all of them that have been proposed, but like um, the spaceless, timeless, non-character uh, god, like the unfalsifiable one that like doesn't have many characteristics. Mm. I can't say that doesn't exist. I yeah. don't know. So it could yeah. be like the energy that's out there yeah. that if someone probably says created god all this the universe, yeah, I sure or yeah. like um, if someone says god is he's not part of this universe, but he created it and you can never get to him because you're immortal. Yeah. I have no way of knowing, you know, I can never say that that person doesn't exist. Yeah. So yeah, that's where I'm at. I think, yeah, you might, you you could probably describe it as generally agnostic, but leaning this way. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So I think it's it's very, like I I totally understand that one. And sometimes even as me an agnostic when I was back in the day, I just didn't care to know too. I was like, I think that way, but, doesn't matter. Honestly, I'm just like, whatever at this yeah, point. So. Just vibing out. 
Now, could I ask you a follow-up question to that? Totally. Yeah. What would you, if there was an energy out there, whatever the energy may be, or God or anything, they created all this. Yeah. Do you think they'd want to be known, or do you think they'd want to remain unknown? And if so, would they want to reach out to their creation or have their creation reach out to them? Mm. You know, just to preface this really quickly, there's yeah. two times where I believed in God. Yeah. One of them was um, through that experience that I told you about. Mm -hmm. Another one was a little bit after. I can't stop. I'm, I'm so with you, man. I just <laughs> up my glasses all the time. I hate <laughs> it. Um, but the other one was I went camping with some friends mm -hmm. and we did shrooms. Okay. And one of them... Uh, told me their idea of god which was like uh like this being it's just this one being that got really lonely so he mm. or she like uh made all of us so that we could interact with the world and with each other yeah and we're all just like part of the same uh you know collective consciousness and i think yeah. like uh what someone told me recently that when people say namaste namaste mm. they're um like my soul connects to yours yeah or, they're yeah. saying like I recognize the divinity in you. Yes. Uh, I know we're only different off of something really surface, but we're part of the same like yeah. source. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I really resonate with that. I uh, I don't resonate with the the characteristic of God put onto it. Um, mm. I think that we're all human and we all have energy, and I think that says that's all you need to say about it mm. personally. Yeah. Um, Does that add value as well to every person's life? Would you say as well? Yeah, okay. yeah, I do. Yeah. I do think so. Um, as uh, to address your question more directly, if there was a God and it was just an energy removed, do you think he'd want us to know about him? And how do you think he or she would want us to get to them? Yeah, I don't know. Um, I think if it's the Christian God and he had a hand in writing the Bible, if it's at all divinely inspired. Hmm. I would personally think that that's evidence to suggest that this God wants us to know them in mm. some sense. And I think that he could have done a better or maybe a clearer job mm. personally. Like um, That's totally fair to say. Yeah. Yeah. Because it's kind of, it's, it was absent the time of like video evidence, which is really important. You yeah. know, it's like, it's, it's been translated a bunch of times. Mm. It's just kind of uh, unreliable to me. Mm. Yeah. So that's where I'm at. Yeah. yeah. Which I think is a fair place to be. Are you are you still searching or are you, have you kind of made up your mind at this point? Um, you know, it's it's really hard for me to introspect, I found. Like yeah. I don't know how to how to if I, how to really honestly answer that. Yeah. But I I'd like to believe I'm open-minded about it. Yeah. Um but I, the thing is um I think a lot of the ways that people are telling me that is the only way to find God, which mm. is to just accept him into your heart. Mm. I don't think I would do that without some, without more evidence first. Yeah. So I might be looking for something which I'll never get, which is mm. more concrete evidence. Yeah. yeah. I know there's been a lot of people out there that they they felt they haven't had evidence. Um, and I know some people they just they reach out. They yeah. they don't know what it is. They could be. There's like, if you're a God out there, whatever you are, whoever you are, like you just reach out to me and. You know, whether that happens, I'm I'm not sure. I was talking to but, the person who was sitting here before her. Told yeah. had an experience where he reached out to God, and mm -hmm. uh, he and then God intervened in his life. Yeah, I think that's really powerful. If it happened to me in a significant way, yeah, where I could be like, that was God. I would totally change my my thing. Yeah, um, just hasn't happened yet. I haven't felt compelled in my adult life to call to him yet. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's so interesting because you can meet great people in every religion. There's mm. fantastic, you know, people that are Muslim, Jewish, um, you know, Jehovah's Witness, Christian, yeah. you know, everything. There, there's amazing people out there. Um, what it, what it comes down to, I think, is if you know, if you feel like you want to reach out to different religions or things of that nature, is that what what do you believe that God would be? Would he be someone that would want to reach out to us? Would he be loving? Would he be, um, you know, vengeful? Would he? What what, what do you think God would be? Um, and then looking at it from like a, a practical perspective, if there's a, is a God out there and he says all these things, is holiness okay? Can I be okay with him being holy and righteous? Mm -hmm. Or do I want to see him how I want to see him? Right. And so, um, yeah, it's a, it's a hard thing to search for absolute truth when there's yeah. so many you know truths out there that you can find. Exactly. Yeah. Um, so really the best thing I would say is if you're interested, just, just start reaching out and keep that search going. Mm -hmm. um, and then just pray that the real God, the true God would reveal himself to you. Mm -hmm. um, for me, that true God is is Jesus Christ, and that's God. Yeah, and I believe that's true for everyone. 
But for you in that search, when you don't know, I would say, yeah, just just keep searching, keep keep looking, and keep asking those questions. I will because it, it could be the most important question of your life. Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. Thanks, man. Yeah, absolutely, man. It's a pleasure to meet you. I would shake your hand, but I know, right? COVID times, right? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. It sucks. Absolutely. Well, yeah. it was great being on, and I'm I'm glad you guys are doing this. Ask yeah. some cool questions. Wave goodbye to the camera there. Hey, everybody. Right. Good to meet y'all. <laughs> Super, man. All right, fantastic. Yeah, it was a pleasure. Are you guys heading out now, or yeah, we got to go eat some dinner. Good Great. workout. Eat some dinner, and then watch a watch a scary movie or oh, something. Hell you know? Yeah, yeah. Perfect day. <laughs> right. Oh gosh. Where, where are you headed? Really cannot feel my legs. Um, <laughs> uh, just past Dina, up past Dina area. But like, you don't, you don't know where you're eating at yet. Oh, we got food at home. Yeah, I make my chicken in town. Yeah. Sick. Later. It's not supposed to happen. Just kidding. It's not a clear, it's like a clear. Okay. <laughs> okay. So the question is, and I will just okay. uh, throw it at the audience. Uh, you thank, thank you. Okay, putting it to the audience, um, my estimate is that we have about 30 minutes where the light will still allow us to, to function. These do turn on. Yes, so the street lights will turn on, and that might matter. We do have some um, lights, on, you know, lights on phone charging batteries that might... <laughs> so that might be what happened. Yeah. You, don't, don't do it, please. I don't want to encourage them to do that. It's not set up with enough uh, uh, for attention to to make that happen. So that might have happened at the end because yeah. I think you've got a habit of that. Right, right, right. Yeah, that's all good. So, question to the crowd: Should we stick it out and look for one more interlocutor, uh, which might end up getting dark toward the end, or should we cut it and bump till next week? And while we're talking, we're probably going to invite interlocutors. Quinn is nodding like, yep, yep, looking for the right kind of people. Hi. Th these, are, uh, these are interviews on any topic that you like. We ask you about your beliefs and why you think so. Go ahead. We might be here. We'll see. Okay. 
Okay, Gigi, we will give it a try. Yes, there are a lot of people here. Oh, yeah, that was a really pretty, pretty Model Y that went by there. If you can see it from different angles, it has different colored paint from deep purple up through something like blue and maybe even green from the right angles. It was really amazingly pretty. So we took a few pictures of it as it went around the corner. I've I've already committed. I've already uh, told you that I'm a Tesla file to the to to, to a fault. If it ain't electric, I ain't interested. So do you think I will have to replace my my smaller battery when I get back? I assume so. Uh, I I don't know. It there's three different versions. One of them has a lead acid twelve volt battery, and then there's an uh, in the later versions there's lithium. I don't know which one, and I think yours is old enough that it wouldn't be the type where they managed to get rid of the battery entirely and just use a uh, high to low voltage converter. Okay. Uh, I can so, I get know. the Tesla service people to come, I assume. I'm if sure. An issue. Probably the car would be able to tell uh, whether that battery, whether that 12 volt battery got recharged and is, and is doing a good thing or whether it's just failing to recharge. As far as the as far as the really big battery, uh, I don't know. I, I I doubt it took much of a hit. It depends on how long. Because once it gets down to a certain point, the car's just gonna stop drawing energy off of it. As as we saw. For anybody else in the room, when I went over to pick up the gear from Reed's place, uh the, the we, we ran into the surprising issue that the car had not been plugged in and Reed was not close enough to it, and uh, it ran out of uh, it ran out of juice, and so we had to recharge it. Excellent. What are you doing? Podcast. Podcast. Oh, fantastic. You want to join ours? Yeah, why not? Okay. Excellent. Nice. Go okay. enjoy that. Yep. They're doing a podcast too. <laughs> uh, yes, but I'm not sure on what. I, I I don't know what. Are they interviewing random people, or are they just going somewhere to sit down? No, I think it looks like they're going to go talk amongst each other. Um, they're doing a. They said they're doing a video audio podcast. Oh, okay. Yeah. Right. They're they're walking over toward where there's a lot of vehicles parked. Yeah, right now uh, um, to watch the Lakers on a large screen. Yeah, and there for the fourth time go a whole lot of really fast cyclists. There they go. Earlier they were like yelling at cars. Yeah, did you hear that? Get out of the road, idiot! That was crazy. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, in this case, I'm pretty sure it was a car. I saw, I saw the car do, uh, wait, where am I going again? And almost stop in the middle of the road to decide whether or not to turn right. I guess the Google Maps um, data for when it was busy is true. It looks much more busy yes. around that time. Yes, apparently so. That that uh, that example you posted last week uh, seems seems to have borne out in both sets of observations. Hmm. And, and tonight, yeah, it's it's gotten um, it's about 40% of a Runyon Park normal. And of course, all my samples of Runyon Park are on Saturday from roughly noon to four. Yeah, that's probably one of the most popular parks in the whole city at that time. Yeah. 
such a pain to get to, but it's worth it. Oh, the Runyon? Yeah. Yeah. It's it's difficult to park, no doubt. Parking around there is ridiculous. Yeah, worth it. Ridiculous and worth it. And of course, because Runyon Park parked there, the parking ridiculous. Parking near a, a, a walking park that has no designated parking at all. It's just neighborhood parking. That's great. But what could they do? They have to pay for a paradise. We wipe those. You can wipe them again if you care. Okay. I'm not okay. Okay. All right, Quinn. Yeah. Hey there. Hi. So, on camera, you're okay with being recorded? No and... problem. No, absolutely. Good, good, good. And what's your name? Just Mike, first name. Mike. Mighty Warrior Noriega. Professional boxer and uh, entrepreneur. Huh. Do you want more than just Mike on there? Yeah. If you could yeah. put Mike the Mighty Warrior Noriega, it would be perfect. Mike. Yeah, I got uh, my own YouTube channel. Mighty too. Warrior. Warrior. Noriega. N O R I E G A. I wonder if that will fit in my. It almost certainly won't, but no, it goes off the screen, but we're going to let it go. Mm -hmm. That's just going to be what it is. Okay. So, uh, cool, cool. How you doing? I'm doing great. Yeah. If you put your headphones on, you can hear yourself well. Okay. And also, since there are people in the Discord room, okay. if they if they speak, you can be able to hear them. Awesome. Yeah. So, Mike, uh, with street epistemology, we like to hear uh, claim you of something you believe. Okay. Uh, about the world, and uh, we like to ask you reasons why you think it's true. What's your mm. Where, how do you come to that conclusion? Things like okay, that. No problem. So tell me a thing that you think is true about the world that affects your choices. Right now, I believe we're living in the last days. The Bible talks about it in Revelation. And I believe that because, uh, well, I'm, I'm a believer in Christ. And uh -huh. I can see everything that's going on right now. That You know, the event of uh, Donald Trump getting sick of COVID. Uh -huh. How the Democrats are always coming against the uh, Republicans because they're Christian conservative. Uh -huh. So I believe in my heart that the Lord is doing a shaking in the world right now. As you can see on Rosh Hashanah, uh, there was an earthquake uh -huh. and I was celebrating Rosh Hashanah and uh, at a church that I was attending and it shook, you know, at uh -huh. 10 57 uh, PM, I have it on my YouTube channel. Yeah. And I was, I was watching it. I was seeing that there are certain times because I've been in an earthquake when it was a uh, resurrection and I've been in a er resurrection Sunday. during a resurrection. Yeah. It's oh. crazy. I, I've seen it. And it was in two. 2000 maybe eight seven maybe. okay i don't remember exactly the actual date but i uh the year but i re remember it was before 2010 okay and i remember those are the times god says he'll give us signs and wonders so there's always a season for everything if you, if you read the bible very well yeah you'll notice that god's numbers are seven okay and everything that has to do with the world it always pertains to israel okay. and israel is always the center of what's going on around the world because if you, I don't know if you believe in this, but I believe the Antichrist is going to come soon and okay. the mark of the beast is coming. Okay. And once that happens is they're going to try to take over Israel. And when that happens, somebody from outside Israel, not the current state of Israel, is going to try to take over Israel. The Antichrist. The Antichrist is going to try to take over Israel. Yes. Go and he's going to call it his center of all, all power. 
So that'll be his center. He'll build a temple. And whenever that temple is built, he will sit on the throne. He will say, I am God. When the people see that he says, I am God on TV, Uh because it will be all over the Internet. It'll be all over the, the, you know, it'll be all over the airwaves. And they will see that he's a he's a liar. First of all, people Uh. will turn against him and they're going to call him. You are the devil. And that's when he'll be revealed. And that's when you'll know he's the Antichrist. (laughs) Okay. I think you're already answering a question that came from the from the audience. What does the end of the world look like to you? Right now, it's yeah. it's under it, it, you're, you're, it's under fire and brim, it's on, under yeah. fire and brimstone. Uh-huh. It's under fire and brimstone. You see all the fires here in this area. Okay. We were preaching in this actual area in Silmar in the mountains, and all of a sudden they just burned them down. <laughs> mm-hmm. So that happened. I was, I'm not gonna joke. Mm-hmm. I have my ministry, boxing ministry in Pasadena at the Rose Bowl mm-hmm. on the other side of the aquatic uh, center, the pool. Okay. I had that on my YouTube channel. Mm-hmm. A week or two later after we made a declaration of my ministry that God gave me, they destroyed uh-huh. it. The enemy destroyed it. Okay. It, the bricks are everywhere. The trees are all knocked down. I don't know who did it, but I know it wasn't from God. It was from the enemy. And when you know who the enemy is, you can see it spiritually uh-huh. on a good versus evil type of a uh, you know fight okay and, i want to type your youtube channel in a way that's clear enough that uh-huh. you just so M- i'm going to say youtube.com uh-huh. slash and it's m-i-k m-i-k space space and for my last name n that's it mick n so it's like mike n okay and that you can find all my videos there just checking that i got it right mm-hmm. uh Good. So if anybody wants to check that out, I'm going to uh, definitely. I want to make a note in case production we're editing this later. No I, I intend to put this link in the description of the of the video. Mm-hmm. Okay. Confidence scale. If if this is uh-huh. eh, God, hardly have an opinion. Don't know anything up to. Oh, I'm completely certain. Where are you? All the way up. All, just, all the way. All the way. Just all the way. Take it right on the edge. On the edge. All right. Uh. Oh. Uh. Uh. Read just a quick question. Uh, answer the. Uh, uh. The yellow and red votes mean the question needs to be either revised or this question shouldn't be asked. Okay. So red is. Yeah, I'm, I'm responding to him here. He asked me a question. Yeah. In, in what we're doing anyway. Okay. I can show you that later. If yeah, you no like. problem. The, no problem. Uh, not a, they not, get no problem questions. at all. No problem at all. Okay, so um, what convinced you that? Okay, well, actually, there's a whole bunch of claims. We are in the end times. Yeah. Seems to be a claim that has several things based under it. Okay. Like uh, the Book of Revelation mm-hmm. could be trusted. Yeah. The Bible is a true source of History. God's word. Uh, mm-hmm. God exists. Yeah. Those kind of things. Yep. Um, what convinced you that the book of Revelation was solid. solid? Totally trustworthy. Because in the Bible talks about if you read it at the very end, God says if you read the whole Revelation, you uh-huh. will be blessed. And as soon as you read it and you finish it, he says it'll confirm with the Holy Spirit will convict you that it mm. is true. And you'll see, you'll seal it in your heart and you'll feel it from the presence of the Lord. And he'll tell you, and he will bless you that you read it because the ones that read it are the ones that truly believe because they want to find out if it's real or not. And Ah. he confirms it with the Holy Spirit by you reading it. And once you read it, the Holy Spirit will convict you and tell you exactly what you need to know. Okay. So you get a divine confirmation. Mm Mm-hmm. Definitely. All right. So, and and you you got one. Yes. Uh, When other people read it, they report the same thing. They would definitely have to, because that's a miracle from the Lord. The Lord will definitely confirm it with the Holy Spirit. Because when you pray, see, when you okay, when you believe in Jesus, I'm gonna tell you something. There's two baptisms Uh you have to take. There's first you confess with your mouth that you're a sinner. Once you confess you're a sinner, you ask God for forgiveness. Because He's the atonement for the sins of all the world. So you ask him, Lord, come into my heart. Forgive me of all my sins Mm -hmm. that you shed on the cross for all of us, for all of the ones in this world, the ones that were lost, but now we're found. And once you cleanse yourself with the blood, now it's you're you're baptized Mm -hmm. in the Holy Spirit. But now you need to be water baptized to be submerged underwater from the old person you were 
to the mm -hmm. new person you're going to be in Christ, which is a new creation in Christ. Once you rise up from the water, you're a new creation. You're automatically baptized and clean, just like we all should be. Once okay. you baptize like that, then the Lord says, now you can be baptized in the Holy Spirit, which is fire. Okay. That's in Acts 2.17. You look that up. It's when Peter brought the, it's called the, the uh, year of Pentecost. And when you have Pentecost, that means the Holy Spirit brings an utterance of the of the holy tongues which nobody really likes to bring up because people think it's kind of like out of this world it's not really real it's yeah. when you, i can i can i can give you an example when you just pray in the in the holy spirit uh -huh. you'll just give a new tongue which everyone has one it's we're all unique we all have different fa fingerprints okay okay same thing with our tongue when you hear someone speaking in tongues you could sound like a chinese language it could sound like a hawaiian language it could sound like an indian language we all have different tongues and languages when we're in the tower of babel right we all were changed we all spoke one language we all were at one tower building it to go to heaven remember revelation we originally spoke one language one and language changed to speak a multiple multiple language. languages okay. on the tower of babel that's why it's called babel babel means babel like in okay. speaking and that's when the lord changed all our tongues that's when we all got confused we couldn't understand nobody mm -hmm. so we all we all segregated <clears throat> to different, you know, nations. Yeah. And that's how it all began. That's how all the tongues started changing. And then when you speak in tongues now in the Holy Spirit, that's the only way you can communicate directly to God. And no one can, oh. no, nothing, no enemy, no evil spirit, no, no principality can understand what you're saying. Only you and the Holy Spirit. Okay. But can God understand me if I speak in plain tongue? How, plain, how can you speak in plain tongue? Like regular, I mean, like speak normal? Yeah, of course. Like okay. you're talking about English? Yes, yeah, yeah. yes, but I'll give you an example. I can speak on to holy tongues anytime. Okay. I could go shanda ba 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 ka shanda sondoro ba 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 ka shanda. That's the way you practice. Okay. You start saying, "Lord Jesus, forgive me of all my sins, cleanse me of all unrighteousness, come into my heart, change me inside out." Okay. You're changed as a new person. After that, you get water baptized, which I've already been. Uh -huh. Once you get water baptized, then you ask for the Holy Spirit to bring fire into you, and that's when you're able to speak in utterance and in, in, in holy tongues. Okay. And those are the gifts of the Spirit. There was a practice step? No, there's no. steps to just get to that point. Meaning, there's ways to get closer to God. Meaning, the Lord gives us examples by his disciples. Uh -huh. His disciples gave us the exact order of what the Lord asked us to do. We get forgiveness of sins from him dying on the cross. Then we ask him to forgive us of our sins. We become a new creation in Christ. Uh -huh. Right? After that, you get water baptized, just like Peter and just like all the disciples did to all the people that were in different nations and in different uh, different gen uh, different uh, religions. And they asked them, OK, how do we get how do we know God? And he says exactly the way I'm going to teach you. I have to baptize you in the Holy Spirit. Confess your sins. Just okay. in Romans 810. Look that mm -hmm. up. Romans 810 says exactly. You confess with your mouth that you are a sinner. Yep. Ask him for forgiveness. Then you will be forgiven. And then now you can be water baptized and then in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, or in the name of Jesus, doesn't really matter. In the name, they're both in the Bible. Mm -hmm. So everybody likes to say one's perfect, the other one's not, but it doesn't matter. They're both the same. Jesus Christ, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, it's a trinity. It's a holy trinity, it's the same yeah. thing. Yeah, so once you once you do that, then all of a sudden you're a new creation, you're a new believer, you're a Christian, right? Because you're brought up, you're in Christ, mm -hmm. which is called Christian, yeah. which is Jesus Christ in you. Mm -hmm. That's all it is. Mm -hmm. Then you become a new creation. Now you okay, just so Christian. You know, Christian really means Christ in you, not not acting like you think Christ acted. It's Christ in you becoming who you are supposed to be in Him. If that doesn't make sense, if you if that makes sense in the Him in the me and that uh, that 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 relationship isn't clear really, to me. But I'm I'm trying to okay. Listen let, let's put it this way. Yeah, He's our Father in heaven. Yeah. He died for our sins. He was brought down. He's the only begotten Son. He was sent down from God the Father into Mary as a virgin and it was through the Holy spirit that breathed in her. That's mm -hmm. how he was born. Mm -hmm. So he doesn't have a, he doesn't have a human DNA of a father. He has a God DNA, okay. which they cannot detect. Right. Cause there's no human that gave birth to Mary. It was God, the father. It was the Holy spirit that breathed into her. Okay. That gave birth to Jesus. That's why he's God, God in the flesh. And that's when the Lord says in John one, it says, mm -hmm. I am the word. The word became flesh. Yeah. In the beginning, the word, was flesh and that means that god in the flesh was jesus christ that's how we know he is god he's of the trinity he's one of yeah. god you know what i mean he's on one he's yes. a person he's a person of god so that's how we know he was sent to die for our sins because john one john one
And John 14, 6 backs that up with saying, I, and it's Jesus speaking, okay. I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one can come to the Father but through me, Christ Jesus. Okay. Um, <clears throat> I'm hearing there's, I, I, I just call this the inner witness of the Holy Spirit or the, or the spiritual confirmation kind of uh, a reason. Yes. And that seems like that should be a very good reason for mm -hmm. you yes. and for anybody who experiences it. Amen. Amen. And, and it's hearsay to anybody on the outside. Yeah, of so course. I'm looking that doesn't at the, know anything. Right. The, so on the outside, uh, what are the reasons that I could tell somebody else about mm. why, why I believe what John says, for example. Amen. Amen. Yeah. He says, he says when John came, John the Baptist you're talking about or which John? You said John 1. So I'm going to say so John, the, 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 the beloved Revel disciple, the one who the wrote revelator, the, the one that wrote Gross. Revelation. Yes. Yeah. Uh, so he's the same the, one. They are definitely the same one. Okay. The same that's one. fine. Mm -hmm. So you were asking me what? what? Um, uh, so, so what can I use if I wanted to tell somebody else? Okay. A simple, because so okay. the hearsay is not going to work. Gotcha. What, what external could I use that would, uh, lead, lead me to think that John was was serious, was real, was and real, was accurate, was, accurate? Was, okay. was 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 speaking truth, was okay. speaking divine truth. Let's like put that. it this way: when you read a book and you know the author, okay, uh -huh. we all know the author. Let's say Webster Dictionary. Sure, we didn't ever met him, right? We right. never met him. Right. He's not alive today. Right, but he wrote the dictionary. We read it, we believe what it says because we learn it in school. Am I right? We believe what it says because we speak the language, uh -huh. we understand the language, and we know the definition. That's rule of thumb. When you grow up, you learn different things. We experience different things growing up. And uh -huh. we're taught by our parents. Our parents are supposed to teach us what we, we don't know when we're little kids, when we're babies. Yeah. Okay, that's their job. As you get older, you go to school, just like Jesus went to school. He went to the temple to learn uh -huh. from, the, from the elders, from all the rabbis. So... All these people that were in the Bible are not alive today to speak on what they wrote. But it is true because we believe and we have a relationship with Jesus, even though we can't see Jesus. Uh -huh. But yet we have to believe without seeing. Just like he told Thomas, uh -huh. one of the disciples says, bless, hear my hands. Look at the holes in my hand. Yeah. Right. He said, look at my hands. Touch them. Uh -huh. You can go right through it. And then he started crying. He started saying, oh, I'm so, so sorry. Forgive me, Lord. I didn't know. He says, uh -huh. blessed are those that don't see right. and believe than those that don't believe because they do not see. Yeah. That's yeah. the same was, thing that you're asking that me. There's more blessing in believing without evidence. Exactly. Than believing because you receive evidence. Exactly. Yeah. Whew. Okay. Um, so... All right, so there's a question from the audience, go and, and uh, I think this is a good way to go. Yeah. It's uh, how much time is left before the world ends? The only way you'll know, and the only way I'll know, mm -hmm. only the Father knows, mm -hmm. not even the Son knows, which Jesus doesn't even know. The mm -hmm. only way we'll know is the last soul that's supposed to be saved, the trumpet will sound right there. Boom. We'll all, the church will leave. We'll no longer the last be soul that's supposed to be saved. The last soul on earth. That is supposed to be saved. That's written in the ah. last book of life. The one that God knows. We don't know who's the last person, but okay. that's why God said it when he was, Jesus was on, um, after the resurrection, he came in on the Mount of Olives and he told his disciples, go into all the world and seek and, and make disciples, right? That was basically go recruit new members of the body. Okay. And every member of the body is, has to go to all four corners of the earth, which is the whole world. Okay. So now... We're going to know when the last trumpet sounds, when the last trumpet in Revelation sounds, yeah. we'll know that the last soul was saved. And that's how we'll know. Okay, so the prediction is that when the last soul is saved, the last mm -hmm. trumpet will sound. Yes, correct. So other than the trumpet sounding, would we have any way to know the There'll last soul? There'll be signs soul? in heaven. Yes, they will. There'll so, be signs in heaven. There'll be fire coming down like brimstone, which is basically the Antichrist will be revealed right before the church will be raised up. So there'll be signs of the end times, meaning... The mark of the beast will come out. Mm -hmm. You'll see, you already see the signs already. You already see that we wear a mask. We go to a we go to a store. We have to be six feet. How come it's not five feet? How come it's not four feet? Because the mark of the beast is number six, six, uh -huh. six, six. Okay. Check that out. The Lord has revealed it to me. And if you understand Revelation, you understand the Bible. It's very clear. 
that the mark of the beast is coming closer and closer because you you'll see that it all started with a debit card. Uh -huh. We used to use money back in the day, right? And now we got a debit card all of a sudden, right? We got used to a debit card. Then all of a sudden it has a chip in it uh -huh. out of nowhere. Am I right? Well, has a chip in it all of a sudden. So then we get used to the chip and now we put the chip into the machine. Right. But then the next chip, the last chip is going to be the chip in our right hand or our forehead. That's how they're going to scan uh -huh. us later. No, that's obvious. Are you, have you seen Elon's uh, Neuralink? Yeah, I've heard it. I've seen it. Yeah, that, 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 that's sort of interesting. Yeah, similar. Okay, so um, I want to I see if there's a prediction in what you're telling me that we could test. Because mm -hmm. so far, it's like the last soul was saved is not something that I could ever know. Well, it's not for us to know. I, it's right. for the Father to know only. So, so the thing is, the thing that you're predicting is there will be a time when trumpets sound and these other events happen. And yeah. that will tell us the other thing. Exactly. Uh, it's, it has to be in order. We can't, we can't beat it. We can't, we can't jump it. You get what I'm saying? Okay. We can't beat God. God only knows what he's going to do when he does it. Okay. So somebody asks... How much time would need to pass before we should be surprised that the world hasn't ended? Well, once they see the church is gone, that'll be already the seven year tribulation. That'll already be a sign that they were left behind. The, the church is gone. So a bunch mm -hmm. of people will we'll be disappear. It's just banished because that the, re the Bible says when he calls okay. his church and the last trumpet sounds, he will take mm -hmm. his church with them. Boom. If, if we got to, I mean, i have probably, you know, if I'm really healthy, I have 30 years left. Okay. If we get to the end of my life and we haven't seen this happen, would that surprise you? No. No, because okay. we still have new babies being born every day. So last days is, is, is generations wide. Generations? But I'll tell you, there's going to be signs. Once you see the mark of the beast come into play, mm -hmm. because it all depends on how much the enemy wants us to die. <laughs> That's basically what we're dealing Who's with. Who's the enemy? The enemy is the devil, the Antichrist, okay. Satan. Once you know his, his, because you can see it in this world. Once you see the evil rise, which uh -huh. has already risen, you'll see God's people rise. Because that's in order for, to shake us, to make us, we don't fear nothing. Uh -huh. But we know when God's on our side, we, we can show who we are. Because you depend on him only. We okay. don't try to fight fire with fire. We fight fire in the spirit. That's how you become a spiritual warrior. And you have to pray for that. And that's where God gives you the spirit. The spirit of God is through prayer. Uh -huh. And fasting, fasting means because just like the enemy does, that Satanists, they, they, they fast and pray. They, they fast and pray more than we do. And I'll tell you that because I've seen that and I've heard that from John Ramirez, evangelist John Ramirez. Huh. He was an ex-Satanist. The Lord changed his life. He used to do exactly what I'm telling you. He used to okay. fast and pray more than a Christian. That, yeah. that tells you how lazy we are. I only know fake Satanists. Yeah. Well, you know what I mean? Yeah, I got you. People who call themselves the Church of State, Satan yeah. and they are. Atheists who are wishy-washy. Well, they they're not they don't believe in Satan, they're believing in some ideals that they're They're more like to. they don't believe in hell or heaven. That's basically how they do it. I think that's mostly true, yeah. Yeah, that's what it is. Yeah. Um since you're at a hundred percent, this hypothetical, this is uh, my last two questions are usually Go this hypothetical. It. Go for it. Hypothetical up. It's it can be hard. So the question would be, what hypothetically could you learn, maybe tomorrow, that you don't know today, and it doesn't have to be a real thing. Okay. That would raise your confidence. Since your confidence is already at a hundred percent, maybe I can reword that last part to say, what would be um, an argument that would make this more convincing to somebody else? Would another argument that if you found was true, something you don't know is true today, but that would lead somebody lead somebody else's confidence to raise basically to make them believe what i believe or just anything in general i i mean in terms of this comment idea this, this idea okay this idea okay what would what would be the kind of information that would raise your confidence in this okay. idea or raise somebody else's? okay well then i would just tell them this if you don't believe in anything if you're an atheist or okay. if you don't you're a satanist you're any other religion besides christian uh -huh. i would just say ask jesus to come to actually reveal it to you I okay. dare you. I double dare you. Okay. Because he will. <laughs> He'll come to you. I'm serious. I'm not joking. How long does it take? It doesn't take that long. In a in a day. That's, oh, okay. If you're if you're that anxious, it all depends on you. Okay. How anxious are you to know? Only God knows. It's between you and him. All right. So the hypothetical in the other direction should be simpler. What could you learn that would lower your confidence? Mm. 
that if all this is in vain? I don't know if it's all in vain. No, maybe, no. Maybe your confidence is, moves just a tiny sliver because you figure out that there's a misinterpretation of one part okay. and what you thought was there is only two thirds correct in this. You know, okay. Well, it then could be, it could be that level. Okay. Of well, then I'll tell you what shift. I depend on. I mm -hmm. did, I do not lean on my own understanding. I lean on his understanding. Okay. Which will convince me all what I don't know. I what I do not know. He will convince me otherwise. I see. Because in other in other words, if I don't understand something, I'm not going to depend on my own understanding. I'm going to ask God for for revelation, which He'll give it to me in a dream or in a vision. Okay. As a prophet of the Lord, you have to be holy, meaning live righteous, as Matthew six thirty three says. Okay. If you seek ye first the kingdom of God and all His righteousness, which mm -hmm. is living holy without sin, not on purpose, then He will reveal and He will give you all the desires of your heart, and everything will be added unto you. So, other prophets today. Yes, of course. Okay. Are you one? Yeah, the Lord has called me one. Okay. Yeah. That's very cool. Amen. <laughs> well, thank you for this conversation. Amen. I, no I, problem. I appreciate I it. I prophesy that the Lord uses you in a mighty way. And if you're not a Christian right now, I believe that in my heart of hearts, uh -huh. you do believe in Christ. Okay. As you giving me this opportunity, this is not from your own uh, doing. It's from the Holy Spirit allowing you to let me do it. Because if it wasn't for God, I wouldn't be here today. Okay. I was prophesied to die a long time ago. Mm. And the Lord has told me, and this is crazy. And I'm gonna tell you, I'm gonna reveal something to you on the air. I got prophesied, prophesied that a bullet was coming towards me, but the Lord put it towards someone else. Wow. And I'm not that's not a joke. It's serious. Yeah. And when you know you're gonna be used by God in a mighty way, that's what happens. That's what God does. Okay. He moves bullets out of the way for you. If you know John Hagee, it's happened to him too. I've heard the name John Hagee. I have not listened very much. There is a uh, 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 his his uh, actual um, testimony is that a guy came in, a crazy guy came in to his church while he was preaching, had yeah. a gun to his face, shot him a couple times Ooh. and it missed him. Boom, 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 boom. And nobody oh, okay. knows where the bullets went. Oh. And he believes an angel just protected him. OK. Um, another question came from the audience. If well, you're, it, no, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of done there. Yeah, I'm, I'm good. With imagine more. what your mind would be like if it no longer held this idea. How would your life be different if you didn't have this in my idea um i believe in my heart yeah i would never stop wanting to learn i would okay. never stop wanting to know if there's a god because i know myself i'm always going to learn i'm always going to want to learn. I'm a, I'm a teachable person okay so i'm going to learn until i find out the truth okay just once like you anybody. have the truth can you stop yeah Be well okay. i'm not going to stop doing what he wants me to do no i mean stop trying to learn it no because you never stop learning the Bible says we're we're not always going to learn everything in, in, in a lifetime. I see. We'll still learn after life too. Okay, so as uh, long after you came to this, you're still getting new detail, new oh, yeah, information. Definitely, as you go. definitely, okay. never stop. Very Just good. like an elder never stops learning how to walk, and and never learns how to stop loving a child or or a grandchild. Okay, things that he didn't know when he was young, he's doing it differently now. Just like you probably never had a cell phone, but nowadays. Now elders have cell phones. Look at this. Yeah. Isn't that crazy? I could freaking four of them. Exactly. Crazy. Exactly. See, we <laughs> never knew this 20 years ago, but the Lord reveals it now. And the Bible talks about the technology will jump before he comes. Yeah. The technology, mm -hmm. sir, has yeah. jumped. 20 years. Definitely. Oh, yeah. Indeed. Mm -hmm. yeah. Thank you for this conversation. No problem. I really enjoyed it. <laughs> Me too. Uh, I don't want to hide behind neutrality. If uh, part of this street epistemology thing mm -hmm. is that I should hear you so neutrally and try to understand where you're coming from and not push back from other positions. Okay, no problem. So if you have questions for me, I'm happy to I'm happy to be open to I'm it. I'm excited just having this conversation. Actually, sure. I was going to go work out and now my brother in Christ is waiting for me, so Good. I don't want to yes. keep on waiting more. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you guys so uh, much. God bless you, like, you guys. You can have one of those three. Sure. That's a, that's one of those obvious bribes to get you to come back and awesome. have more conversations. I'm going to not... Oh, I'm, yeah. I'm going to uh, elbow air, air bump. Air yeah. bump. There air you go. Bump. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Thank you. My no problem. God bless you. What was your name? My name is Dolly. Dolly. Yes. Nice to meet you, Dolly. I'm, I'm also known as Juggling Lessons. Nice. Online. Shout I'm out jugg to Juggling Lessons. Yes. All right. And Take we're gonna care, guys. We're going to publish your YouTube on the, in the Awesome. In and the it's Mike the Mighty Warrior Noriega. I have the fastest knockout in history. 15 second first round knockout. Wow. In okay. my welterweight division. Welterweight. 15 second knockout. 15 second knockout. Okay. It's on It's on Wikipedia. Thank what you. YouTube too? YouTube too, yeah. Yeah, for sure. Thank God my mom recorded it. it was you can Mexico. take your yellow. You just yeah. hit oh, yeah, it from yeah. yourself. Yeah. Everything's on there. I have over 300 videos. Fantastic. Yeah. That's way more than me. Yeah. For my weight size, yeah. Mike Tyson was 33.
Mine was 15. Cut it in half. There was a girl that had one in seven, but she's a girl. And it. Girls aren't as tough. Yeah. Well, it's not that they're not as tough. Is it the girl that she fought? They didn't know how to fight. Oh, okay. Uh-huh. It was basically like her face was open. Uh oh. You know what I mean? Mine wasn't an easy target. Mine was I had to I had to fight him. Mhm. So I had to work. <laughs> All right. God bless you, brother. Take care, man. Right. Mike, there you go. Nice to meet you. Thank All you for the interview. Yep. Yeah. God bless you. All right. Thank you. Bye bye. So. And with that. Yeah. And with that, we're gonna call it a dark. <laughs> it is night time. Uh, so thank you all for coming to this uh, crazy long, late, and technologically challenged uh, street epistemology in the park. We had four really nice conversations. I I really enjoyed them, and it was certainly worthwhile. I'm going to log out here, though I'll end the recording and then uh, just leave the wide camera on until Quinn shuts it off. Actually, he might be doing that now. He just turned it off. That's okay. You all saw the setup. Just play that backwards and imagine a lot less light. So I'm going to uh, log out. Thank you all for for coming and uh, we will see you I seem to remember that my next is Thursday. Uh, yeah, three out of four believers. The first might have been a believer, but that wasn't the, that we didn't get into that claim. Okay. Ending the recording at three hours and one minute. Yeah, I didn't know if I get that deep.